These are creepy TikToks that will make you rethink your whole reality. Adam and Eve were not created by a divine being, but were actually sent to Earth by extraterrestrial entities. According to this theory, these beings saw Earth as a suitable planet to sustain life and decided to seed it with their own genetic material. These are the nine deadliest animals to humans. You may think they're polar bears, lions, or even sharks, but they're not. Wait till you see these. <laughs> your boy just hit 10,000 subs! I'm back, it's your boy FITTI to the E, and today we're watching this compilation together, so grab your water, your popcorn, whatever you want. Your boy just hit 10,000 subs. It feel like it was just a couple days ago that I was at 800. Play the replay. This could follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, and soon to be YouTube. Hopefully, if you follow me right now, you'll be a day one. Yep, that was crazy. Now I'm at 10,000. But remember to subscribe and like the videos so and get pushed to way more people. The like goal for this video is 1,000 likes. I finally upped it because I was like, yo, we hit 1,000 like consistent. Why not just aim for 1,000 likes? But if you like the chain and the sunglasses, check the link down below. These sunglass and chain are free for a limited time only. So get you a free pair right now today i also want to say a big thank you to cook and crack for this two dollar donation if you want to be mentioned in this segment of my video just hit the super thanks below and i will put you in do not answer this phone call this is john pork now he's supposedly a cgi generated influencer with an unsettling appearance he seems to be half man half swine the creature posts videos of himself dancing and traveling around the world to popular tourist locations. But this is where things get scary. You see, John used to call everybody, but nobody would answer before he was sadly unalive. Damn. Yeah, John is no longer with us. He had went out for a night of fun and tragically was unalive. After hmm. this, people have been getting strange calls from a haunting contact that says John Pork. And if you answer, this is what happens. Before I tell you, I know this fool look good. I'm sorry. I can't share. But here's what we're going to do. Your fourth ad has to make or buy you food for the rest of this month. Since I made you suffer. Let me know who it is. Supposedly, if you answer the call of John Pork, you'll summon him from the dead. And at midnight, he'll appear. <laughs> Best believe if any John Pork is calling me, I'm not answering. Do not want you to appear at my door, bro. Have you guys heard of the gin-filled wedding? I don't know about you guys, but this story definitely freaked me out. Let me know what you think. So this story takes us back to 1997 in Kuwait, where we meet this woman here named Nora. She actually had her own band that was quite popular in the area, and they would perform at many, many weddings. And on one particular day in 1997, she received a phone call about someone inquiring about her band playing at an upcoming wedding. Of course, she said yes, and soon enough, the wedding came around. Now, at this point in time, it was very common for weddings to be held at the homes of the family. And this time, it was no different. The wedding was being held at a giant mansion in Kuwait. So Nora and her bandmates get to the house, and they notice how beautifully decorated it was. They knock on the door, and a woman opens it and lets them in. Nora and her bandmates were then led to a separate seating area. As they were waiting, a woman comes towards them and greets all of the bandmates. She talks to them about how much she enjoys their music, greets them, and gives them all a kiss on the cheek. But this is where Nora saw something very odd. When she went to give the woman a kiss on the cheek, she said that the woman's face was extremely hot, almost as if she had a fever. Mm. And she also stated that the woman had a very masculine vibe to her, but she decided to brush it off. So Nora and her bandmates start playing their music and everyone at the wedding is dancing and having a good time. However, in the middle of all this, one of Nora's bandmates noticed something very alarming. She tells Nora that she noticed that many of the women had an abnormal amount of body hair on them. But then she tells Nora that one of the women lifted up her skirt and she noticed that she didn't have regular feet. Instead of having normal human feet, the woman ended up having hooves. Obviously, this freaked out Nora's bandmate quite a lot. Nora tells her friend not to freak out and to continue playing because they didn't want to draw any unwanted attention towards them. A few minutes after that, Nora said the bride and groom finally entered the room. They were both then sat at this weird looking statue that had its mouth wide open. And just a few minutes after that, all of the lights completely went out inside the house. Nora and her bandmates took this as an opportunity to finally escape and they just ran out of the house into the darkness of the night. 
At this point, it was now around 3 a.m. and the women thankfully ended up running into a man. He asks them what's wrong and they tell him that they were just playing at a wedding at that house behind them. The man was extremely confused and so he asks the woman to point out the house. The woman then point at a house that had been abandoned. And the man tells them that no one has lived there for over 10 years. And when the women look back, the beautiful house that they had arrived to was no longer there. After that night, Nora and her band decided to retire. Man, Nora, I do not blame you. I would retire too. I'd be like, honestly? Yeah, I just played at a demon's wedding. I'm leaving. This, this just ain't for me, bro. This is the father-daughter incest case that turned into a murder. You guys, this one is disgusting. And if I had to hear it, then so do you. Hi, I'm Julie. I talk about true crime, dark history, and all things weird and spooky. So if that's what you're into, please give me a follow and also follow my Instagram. Okay, so you're going to need a backstory. In 1995, when Stephen Plattel was 20 years old, he met and groomed 15-year-old Alyssa on the internet. He traveled to San Antonio, Texas to begin a sexual relationship with her. And then Alyssa ran away with Stephen to begin a life with him in New York. Alyssa is his first wife, by the way. Alyssa became pregnant at 16, and then they had their first baby when she turned 17 years old, and they named her Denise Plattel. According to Alyssa, Stephen inflicted torturous abuse on their daughter, Denise. He pinched her and beat her till she was black and blue, and even tried to drown her multiple times. Alyssa decided to put Denise up for adoption because she didn't believe that Denise would have a chance at life if she lived with Stephen. Anthony and Kelly Fusco adopted Denise and renamed her Katie Rose Fusco. In August 2016, when Katie was 18 years old, she reached out to her biological parents Stephen and Alyssa Plattel on Facebook. They met in Nightdale, North Carolina, and Katie then decided to move in with Stephen and Alyssa and their two children. By the time Katie moved in, Stephen and Alyssa had actually agreed to separate so they were sleeping in different bedrooms. Over the following months, Stephen and Katie became incredibly close. In May 2017, Alyssa read in one of her children's diaries that Katie and Stephen were involved in sexual activity and that Katie was pregnant. She read that her two children were told that Katie was their stepmother. Alyssa called Stephen immediately and then he confirmed that this abusive, incestuous relationship was true and that she was actually pregnant. Alyssa then called the police, as she should. On July 20, 2017, Stephen and Katie got married and lied on their marriage documents saying that they weren't related. The wedding was attended by Stephen's mother and Katie's adoptive parents. It just baffles me that they attended this disgusting wedding. There is no way that these people didn't know that they were related. Katie gave birth to her own father's baby and named him Bennett Kieran Plattel in September 2017. In January 2018, Katie and Stephen were arrested for incest charges. The judge ordered that Katie and Stephen have no contact with each other and that Bennett would go into the custody of Stephen's mother. Following their release bond, Katie decided to move back in with her adoptive parents and she told Stephen that she did not want to continue with this relationship. That's gotta be one of the weirdest stories I've ever heard in my entire existence. The fact that those parents actually attended the wedding also, that's, that's a little bit sus, don't y'all think? Like what? I don't know, man. Was this man really a time traveler? In the early 2000s, a man by the name of John Titor started popping off on the internet. Well, you see, he claimed that he was a member of a military unit and was sent back by their time travel division. He went further and provided detailed information about the technology of his time machine, even posting photos about it and explaining how it was invented and how it worked. However, at the peak of his following, he suddenly disappeared and was never heard from again. Some people speculated that he was revealing too much and was captured by the government. But even though his predictions about the future have come true, many people are still asking the question. I don't know. I've kind of heard about that time traveler, dude. I don't really know if he's really a time traveler. I mean, who am I to judge? Maybe he really is. What do you think? Do you think he's a time traveler? Put it down in the comments. Were Adam and Eve actually aliens? Some theorists believe that Adam and Eve were not created by a divine being, but were actually sent to Earth by extraterrestrial entities. According to this theory, these beings saw Earth as a suitable planet to sustain life and decided to seed it with their own genetic material. Adam and Eve, therefore, were the first humans to be created on Earth, but their DNA was not entirely of this world. This could explain why the story of Adam and Eve has so many similarities with other ancient creation myths from around the world. 
Some proponents of this theory suggest that Adam and Eve were not the only extraterrestrial beings to be sent to Earth. They believe that there have been multiple instances throughout history where advanced civilizations have intervened in human affairs, such as in the construction of ancient megalithic structures. I think when they said structures, they're just talking about like that and the pyramids. I know a lot of people are like, the pyramids were created by aliens, this and that. I mean, I don't know, although it does seem a little bit convincing, but who knows, who knows? These are the nine deadliest animals to humans. You may think they're polar bears, lions, or even sharks, but they're they're not. Wait till you see these. It's probably a bug. Number nine, hippos. Uh -oh. 500 human deaths per year. Mm. Number eight, elephants. 600 deaths per year. Number seven, saltwater crocodiles. 1,000 deaths Damn. per year. Number six, roundworms. 2,500 deaths per year. How do you get those? Year. Number five, scorpions. 2,600 deaths per year. Number four, Assassin bugs, 10,000 deaths per year. Number three, saw scaled viper snakes, 138,000 deaths per year. Number two, freshwater snails, 200,000 deaths per year. And finally, number one, mosquitoes, 725,000 to 1 million deaths per year. The mosquito one, I could see that being a high possibility because mosquitoes carry a bunch of different diseases. They bite anything. So whatever this deer just had and they come bite you, you're gonna have that one. I don't make the rules, bro. But how does a freshwater snail kill people? Like, what does it have? What type of venom is that? So a lot of people know the movie, The, real the Texas, Texas Chainsaw, Chainsaw Massacre. Massacre. Most people know him as like, he's this slasher with a chainsaw that he like wears people's faces. And you know, he's just Bad like, beans. his family is helping him like commit all these murders and they're trying to keep it hushed because he's crazy. And it's like, oh, he's just our sweet little boy. He's just not all the way there. And that's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's what most people know him as, right? But what most people don't know is that it is actually based off of a real story. So there's this guy named Ed Ginn. Right, Ed Ginn mm. was born in Wisconsin and he grew up and he was super isolated, like always by himself. People described him as like a weird dude. Like he was very, always like by himself, like never really in a crowd or with had any friends. He was always like a recluse. Ed Ginn started mm. grave robbing and like digging up dead bodies and he would use their skin for like stuff around the house. He'd use their bones as like utensils and, and he has been confirmed to have killed at least two people, but they think it's upwards of 10. Yo, bro. I was butchering the hell out of his last name. It's Ed Gein. And yeah, he was one of the weirdest dudes. He would literally like chop people up, feed their meat to the people in the town. It was disgusting. People are weird, man. You just gotta be careful. If you ever hear a whistle coming from the woods, it's probably too late for you. As you may have heard, you should never whistle near the woods at nighttime or you may attract something sinister to your location, like. However, these creatures are not the only ones that are indicated by a whistle. El Salbon, also known as the Whistler, is said to have been a Venezuelan man who was doomed to become a damned soul after murdering his father or father-in-law, depending on which version of the story you hear. According to one version of the legend, the man had been working on his father's farm when he received word that his pregnant wife had had her virtue questioned and was murdered by his father or father-in-law. He became enraged and killed his father to avenge her death. Upon finding out that he had killed his father, his grandfather teamed up with many of the local farmers to capture and brutally torture the man by first whipping his back and then rubbing salt into the wound to increase the pain. Oh. They then murdered him by sending two huge dogs after him as he fled into the woods. His body was never recovered, so no one really knows what happened to him. However, many people believe that he became a restless soul wandering for eternity, killing any adulterers and drunk travelers that cross his path. Another version claims that he shows up at people's doorsteps with a bag of bones, sets it on the doorstep, and begins counting every single bone. And as the story goes, if you don't listen to the clanking of the bones, your entire family will die. Mm. Regardless of the specifics, all versions claim that his presence is declared with the sound of a whistle. If the whistle sounds nearby, he's actually very far away and you're probably safe. But if the whistle sounds far in the distance, he's nearby and it's probably too late for you to escape. If it's any consolation, you'll get to travel a lot as Bones and the Whistler's sack. She said, you'll get to travel a lot, but you might be dead. That's crazy. When they say they whipped him and put salt in his wounds, that has to be one of the most terrifying things ever because salt, it gets stuck in there and it's just like little crystals rubbing against his floor. Ooh. R.I.P. that dude, man. Couldn't be me. The picture behind me is considered to be one of the scariest pictures on the internet. 
It was the mid-1950s and the Cooper family had just bought their first home in Texas. Excited to finally be living the American dream, they sat down for dinner and decided to take a family photo. They took the photo and it appeared like everything was completely normal. The father, Mr. Cooper, took a picture of his wife, his mother, and their two sons. But when he took the film in to get it developed and he got the pictures back a few weeks later, they noticed something very strange. This what the was the picture they got back. Nah, <laughs> nah, that didn't look real to me, bro. I was like, yo, whose man fell through the roof? Yo, that looked crazy. A mommy influencer was just convicted for lying about her children's kidnapping. Wow. In December of 2020, Katie took her two children to a Michael's craft store. They Mom bought some influencer. items and went back to the car with no issues. But a few minutes later, she called police and said that a couple tried to kidnap her children. A week later, Katie made a video about it and posted it to her Instagram, Motherhood Essentials. It gained over 4 million views. But this time, she added more details than she gave to police. She claimed a couple followed her around the store, made comments about her kids, and then tried to take them. She also went on the local news talking about it. So police followed up and she identified this couple. But after police questioned the couple and watched the video, they realized that Katie made it all up. In 2021, Katie was charged with three misdemeanor counts for making a false report. This past Thursday, a jury found her guilty on one of those counts. Her bond was set at 100,000. Whatever you do, do not wear red. In the 1940s, a series of mysterious disappearances occurred in Vermont in an area known as the Bennington Triangle. Six people disappeared, one after the other. What seemed like a strange coincidence was that all six were wearing red. Glastonbury Mountain is at the center of the triangle. Six persons went missing in the area between 1943 and 1950, and none of the cases were ever solved. What was the same for all of them was that they all disappeared into thin air and they were wearing red. The Bennington Triangle has a history of UFO sightings, Bigfoot attacks, and Native American curses. Many people also claim that the area is a window to another dimension because of the many strange occurrences. Due to everyone eventually choosing to move, the town has become a ghost town. But although the town is completely deserted and abandoned, a series of mysterious deaths continues. If I'm being honest, I don't think that it's the fact that they're wearing red is the real reason they vanished. I think whatever was out there was like, oh, people. And boom. It's an entire civilization of people that have no idea about the outside world. Come on, bro. Come on. It's 2023. There's this <laughs> island called Centennial Island. It's illegal to go there. The Indian Navy rolls three miles around. Yeah. You're not allowed to go past that. Whenever the British showed up, whenever they had control of Indian, they actually took two adults and two kids back to India. Yeah. The two adults died from disease because uncontacted tribe, they don't have like the same immune system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they eventually brought back the two kids. But mm -hmm. you can kind of see that that doesn't really give them a, a good view of outsiders right there's this kid from america mm -hmm. i think his name was john allen cho yeah. he wanted to bring christianity to these people he actually hired <sighs> heard about this illegal, dude man indian fishermen to bring him close enough so he actually had a canoe that he dropped down and tried to go there yeah. multiple times but they kept on trying to attack him and yeah. stuff. So go back to the boat eventually he went there and told the indian fisher boat to leave yeah and he still has like i think it's like 13 pages that they're able to find of mm -hmm. like him talking about like how he's scared for his life but how beautiful the sunset is and he's scared. yeah i feel like it was one of those things where he was trying to do something nice but you also got to think about the logistics in it like do you really think they would listen to you and then change religions another thing you got to take into consideration too these people are literally like dark skinned and he's white so they're probably looking at him like yo this dude is like here to do some you know the Vatican doesn't want you to know about this time device. In 2002, a book was released by a man named Francois Brun that revealed that time travel may already be possible. Well, you see, he claimed that in the 1950s, 12 world-renowned scientists actually cracked the code on time travel with the ability of harnessing electromagnetic sound waves that had been emitted in the past. He went on to show further proof with a photograph of Jesus's actual crucifixion. How However, when questioned about the whereabouts of the device, he mentioned that the Vatican came in and confiscated it, and denying that anything of the sort ever existed. Interestingly enough, in 1988, the Vatican passed a law stating that anyone caught in possession of a device with time travel capabilities will be excommunicated. If the chronovisor was not real, then why was a law such as this passed? Even though you can watch the full video by clicking on the link in the description below, what is the Vatican afraid of, and is it true? 
that. All right, let's say that was real. How are, we, how are you supposed to go back in time though? Do you just put in some calculations like, okay, Jesus was approximately a two, three, four, five, six, seven, and dun, 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 boom. Then it's just like, and you're like, wow, wow. Let me see if I can get some pictures. Wow. And it's like, guys, Jesus, I just saw him get executed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how does that work? Let's talk about the true killer car that inspired the 1983 horror movie, Christine. This John Carpenter film was the adaptation of the 1983 novel, Christine by Stephen King. In both the book and the movie, it's about a 1958 Plymouth Fury possessed by otherworldly forces terrorizing a small town. But there really is a killer car that this story is about. Meet the Golden Eagle, which was a 1964 Dodge 330 limited edition. It has been dubbed the most evil car in America. According to the story, it's responsible for at these 14 deaths. The Golden Eagle was originally used as a police car in Old Orchard Beach, Maine. Three of the officers who drove the vehicle all ended up killing their families in a murder-suicide. Oh. Eventually, it was sold to the Allen family, and while no members of that family were ever harmed, several poor souls who vandalized the car in the 80s and 90s met tragic fates. And two kids who were hit by other cars died after being flung onto the Golden Eagle. Mm. Then in 2008, one kid just touched the car. Later, he went home to murder his whole family and burn his house to the ground. Wendy Allen, who was nicknamed Eel Cat and the Sea Witch of Old Orchard Beach, was the Golden Eagle's longtime owner and continued to drive it despite its apparent kill count. One day, they sought to put an end to the madness by stealing the car, chopping it up, and distributing each piece to various junkyards. Other than the doors just randomly opening on the highway, she claims that nothing spooky has been attributed to the rebuild of the Golden Eagle. Oh yeah, she's bugging. That itself is scary. You're just whipping on the highway going like, you know, 75, 70 miles per hour. The door opens. And that's the car probably trying to kill her for real. Like, this car has like a lot of bodies. Why? What you mean by that's not scary? That'd be terrifying to me. My car door just randomly open up while I'm going like 80 miles per hour. Nah. If you were wondering how much human skin goes for on the black market, it's $10 per square inch. The average human body has up to 2,800 square inches of skin. If you were to sell an entire human body on the black market, that would get you about $28,000. In my opinion, I don't even think that's really worth it because let's say you do get 28 grand, there's a high chance that that person you're even trying to sell the body to, the skin to, whatever, that's probably like undercover or something. You try and sell it, boom, next thing you know, you're in a cage for years. I'm good. This is a disturbing case of the slender man I heard man about stabbing. this one too. Oh my on the God. morning of the 31st of May, 2014, a man on a bike ride in Wisconsin made a shocking discovery. A 12 year old girl, Peyton Lutner, was lying on the grass covered in blood. The day prior, the young girl had been at a sleepover with some of her friends. She hadn't realized that the sleepover had been a trick to lure her into the woods to murder Damn, her. Damn, bro. Two years before what the media dubbed the Slender Man stabbing, Peyton had met her friend Morgan at school. The pair had become friends when Peyton noticed her sitting alone in the cafeteria and felt sorry for her. The two became close and then they made another friend, Anissa Weir. Anissa on the left here was described as a cruel girl. She seemed really jealous of the friendship between Peyton and Morgan. As their friendship grew, Anissa and Morgan became obsessed with the internet meme Slender Man. Slender Man was a tall, faceless man with long arms who turned viral when people would Photoshop him into creepy images. The mythical man would prey on young children and lure them into the woods to kill people. Shockingly, around December 2013, Morgan and Anissa concocted a plan to kill someone in order to show their dedication to the fictional Slender Man. Their plan was to invite Peyton to Morgan's birthday to get her alone and then lure her into the woods and kill her. Morgan actually described this as a flawless plan. As the girls started their walk to the woods, Morgan snuck a knife from her kitchen into her waistband. They then completely blindsided poor Peyton. Morgan jumped on top of her and started stabbing her. The two perpetrators then run off claiming that they were going to go and get help. The young girl was left to struggle on her own and crawl towards the road to get help. When the cyclist discovered her, an ambulance arrived and nurses noted that she had 19 stab wounds. She had six hours of intensive surgery, but miraculously survived. The girls were charged with attempted first degree intentional homicide. Now, the jury actually found Morgan not criminally responsible due to schizophrenia. She was sentenced to 40 years in a mental health institution. 
Anissa had apparently experienced shared psychotic disorder and was sentenced to 25 years in a mental I know a lot of criminals like to think that mental institutions are actually better than going to prison, but it's actually worse. So I know a lot of people like to play insane, but trust me, you do not want to go there. What I will say though, that girl that survived those stabbings, she is a real trooper. She got stabbed over 19 times and still clawed her way back to the street, bro. Big round of applause to her. And she won the battle too, because at the end of the day, she's still here. And these other people are locked up in a mental institution. So, big round of applause to her. Five of the most disturbing films to ever exist. Part three. Listen, this shit only gets worse and worse, bro. First up, we got 1999's The Red Room. This is a Japanese movie about four people who participate in a deadly card game but only one of them survives. It's basically like a sick twist on a reality game show. What makes this movie different than the other movies on these disturbing movie lists is the fact that this one was actually pretty decent. It wasn't just blood, guts, and gore for no reason. This one actually had a nice plot and it was executed pretty good. Usually I tell y'all don't go find these movies, but if you can find Red Room, I suggest you watch it. Oh, but one that I would not suggest you go watch though is Where the Dead Go to Die. See, this is an animated movie, you feel me? So, uh. The links that they could go to make this as disturbing as possible was endless. Bro, this hmm. movie got like a bunch of kids following a demonic puppy and the puppy be doing a whole bunch of crazy shit. Like, did, yeah, I don't know, bro. You can actually find a version of this on YouTube. So I ain't telling you to go watch it, but if you want to, then go, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, you know where to go. All right, on the next one, I had to blow myself up real big to try to block some of this post out because I couldn't find one that was TikTok safe. So yeah, but the movie name, hmm is the gateway meet so the movie follows the a group of Satanists who live in like this quiet little village lake town fishing town or whatever and they just be out there wilding out doing the most egregious things you can imagine nefarious activities like trying to open up a portal to hell yeah you heard that correctly you can skip this one you've heard of faces of death correct well let me introduce you to the real shit traces of death hmm. see the difference between traces of death and faces of death is that faces of death wasn't 100 percent real a lot of it was just dramatized or just completely made up for the documentary however everything you see in traces of death is 100 percent real they even had the live court footage of our bud dwyer when he himself mm. in the courtroom in full graphic How do you do detail. that traces of death is nuts and it ain't just one they did a series of these and lastly what some people consider to be one of the most Disturbing movies child. that were ever made. Snuff R73. It is a 10 minute and 55 second compilation mixtape. And I ain't gonna lie, a lot of these movies on this list, I have seen. I've done the research and I went and found them and I watched them so I can make these videos. But this one, after I read the description, I said, fuck no, hmm. ain't no way in hell I'm watching <laughs> this shit. A Serbian film is like an after school special compared to this. And I wish I would stop bringing that damn movie up. And there you what? go, five more disturbing movies. Watch at your own discretion. I mean, man, if you guys want to see those movies, check those movies out and let me know what you guys think down in the description. Yesterday, I actually watched Saw X. It was one of the best movies I've seen all year. Saw X, very, very much recommended. The foreshadowing, the twist, the irony, the, everything was just amazing about that movie, except for the part where it was like people dying and stuff, but hey. That's how it goes. But just remember to subscribe, and if you like the video, please like the video. Love you guys for making me hit 10K. Remember that these chains are free for a limited time. Only check the link down below. Nobody asked for this, but since the third season of the Chucky series just got announced for October, I think it's only right for me to give you guys my official ranking of every Child's Play movie we have ever fucking seen. Not this, though. This, this is like, this is just fecal matter this is just dog shit if i'm being honest with you but until last we got child's play 3 look i fucked with the military school setting i thought it was pretty fucking dope but the, the movie itself it, it's really fucking boring if i'm being honest with you next up we got wow. seed of chucky now i really do personally enjoy this movie it's one of my guilty pleasures but come on even i know out of all the chucky movies this isn't this isn't even top five right after that we got called to chucky this is the film where they introduced the the splitting of the souls the multiple dolls just a bunch of other shit we've never seen in the Child's Play franchise before. And I'm not gonna say I didn't fuck with it, but 
It caught me out the blue and it's a little random if I'm being honest with you. Right after that we got Child's Play 2. This is a very good sequel to a very good first movie and the third act of this movie is in my opinion the best third act out of any of the Child's Play movies. Breaking into the top three we've got Curse of Chucky. This is where the franchise said fuck it we're done with the comedy shit we're going back to our fucking roots and that's exactly what they fucking did. Chucky is back on his demon time and you feel me he's catching fucking bodies again and Nika I don't care what anybody says Nika is a top five final girl of all time. And if you haven't seen the Chucky series please don't try to argue argue that shit with me because trust me if you watch the first two seasons you'll look at Nika and be like damn she might fuck around and just be a top three final girl I don't know coming in at number two we've got Bride of Chucky now I already know a bunch of people are gonna try to disagree with me and shit but I don't care this movie it, it's fucking fun bro I'm not gonna sit here and let you tell me that a movie where Chucky and Tiffany catch stupid fucking bodies <laughs> pull up a fucking cop car Frame a fucking teenage couple for a bunch of murders. You're not gonna sit here and tell me that shit is bad. And last but not least, we've got Child's Play from 1988. Honestly, I, I don't gotta explain shit. This movie, this movie did things for the fucking horror genre. This shit did things for the the fucking killer doll genre if that was even a fucking genre in the first place anyways that's my official ranking of the child's play franchise if you guys want me to rank any other horror movie franchise just let me know come on you guys already know if you comment some shit nine times out of ten i'm going to not gonna lie i never really watched the chucky movies like that but by the way how he described it i would say 10 out of 10 to i say that is the perfect ranking Part two on what happened to 12 year old Florencia Di Marco and how she told people she was being abused, but nothing was done about it. The police Damn. look at the surveillance footage and they see a man that looks exactly like Lucas throwing the backpack into the field. They're so confused by this, so they go ask some of the neighbors and the neighbors say that yes, they also saw a man that looked just like Lucas walking around the area. Start digging deeper into this and they go to Florencia's school to look at the surveillance footage from the day that she went missing. Because remember, Lucas says that that morning he dropped Florencia off at 8 o'clock. So they look at the footage and that's when they realize that Lucas was lying. The footage shows Damn, Lucas Luffy. in his van just driving by the school. He never stopped, he never parked, he never dropped off Florencia. She never got out of the car. Investigators start speaking to the teachers and the administrators of the school and they all confirm that Florencia never made it to class that morning. So once again, Lucas was caught in another lie. And the day after police found this footage, 12 year old Florencia Di Marco was finally found. But unfortunately, it was not in the way that everyone had hoped for. And just a trigger warning, what I'm gonna say next is disturbing. Florencia's body was discovered under a bridge by fishermen and neighbors in a grassy area in San Luis, about 35 miles away from her home. She was found naked from the waist down, her hands were tied, and she was covered in bruises. The neighbors and the fishermen said that they aren't even medical professionals, but by the look of Florencia's body, they could tell that she had been severely essayed. The medical examiner concluded that Florencia was severely R-worded before her death, and that this wasn't the first time severely. that this had happened. She actually had bruises and injuries and marks on her body from years ago, which meant that Florencia was being essayed for years. She also had defense wounds on her so that meant that she fought back whoever attacked and killed her. As for her cause of death, the medical examiner concluded that she was strangled to death by a lasso. What's weird is that when police found her backpack, the dictionary had the word lasso highlighted, which makes them believe that maybe she had been threatened to be killed by a lasso beforehand and that she had opened up the dictionary to see what it meant. She also had the word prostitution, stick, and brother-in-law highlighted. So what did all of this mean? Three days after Florencia's body was found, her stepfather Lucas was arrested. He was charged with essaying her and he was also charged with her murder. Now he claims that he was completely innocent, that he never abused her and that he didn't kill her. Now, as for the mother, Karina says that she had no idea that any of this was happening to her daughter. However, a couple of teachers and friends of the family have come out and said that that wasn't true. Some teachers from Florencia's elementary school said that one time Florencia told them, my father caresses me. They thought this was weird so they reported it to Karina and Karina said, oh my daughter is lying. And the school just didn't do anything else about it. They just kind of took Karina's word and they didn't report it to the police, nothing. Florencia also told one of her teachers that her stepfather would come into her room at night and grope her. Karina knew about this, but once again, nothing was done about it. Even the teachers, I feel like they should have just called the police and ignored what Karina was saying and like figured out if this was actually true or not. Karina was later arrested for letting the abuse happen and she was sentenced to 18 years. As for Lucas, he actually took his own life while in prison and he left a letter behind saying that he had found Florencia dead in her room and that he freaked out and that's why he decided to throw her body over the bridge. But no one believes him. It breaks my heart that Florencia asked for help, but Cap. didn't get it. Bro, that dude is lying for what? You could tell he's lying. He's like, oh, I just found her body in the room. Instead of calling the cops or telling the mom, I just took her body and threw it in the lake. <laughs> no one's dumb, bro. Come on now. That's messed up. That has to be one of the craziest stories I heard all day, too, bro. Like, nah, RIP her, bro. May her soul rest in peace. Good facts. Part 108. In 1959, a white journalist named John Howard Griffin disguised himself as a black man and traveled through the deep south for six weeks. 
After writing a book about his experiences with racism, he was forced to move to Mexico for several years due to the constant barrage of death mm. threats. Here's a clip of Admiral Jeremiah Denton blinking the word torture in Morse code while he was being held captive in the Vietnam War. He was being interviewed for Vietnamese propaganda, but U.S. intelligence was able to decipher his message. Wow. In 1951, New Zealand author Janet Frame was diagnosed with schizophrenia and scheduled for a lobotomy. But just days before the operation, she won New Zealand's most prestigious literary award, prompting doctors to cancel the operation that would have mashed her brain. Mm. After the 1947 murder of Elizabeth Short, aka Black Dahlia, reporters told her mother that Elizabeth had won a beauty contest. Contest. Once they pried enough information from her for their story, they informed her that... Ever wondered where your hard-earned tax money goes? Brace yourself, because the shocking truth will leave you speechless. It turns out that the only purpose of your tax dollars is to make the rich even richer. But wait, there's more. In the United States, there's no government-funded unemployment or retirement fund, and proper health care seems like a distant dream. So where does all that money collected by the government each year actually go? Prepare to be stunned. A significant portion is used in financing wars, not just in Ukraine, but also in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. But why? What's the United States' motive for engaging in these conflicts? It's all about gaining resources, asserting dominance, and avoiding potential conflicts. The United States spends a massive chunk of its tax revenue on military activities abroad. The U.S. Army has well over 6,500 tanks, each costing on average $5 million. That's a mind-blowing $32 billion spent solely on tanks. Now, can you even imagine the astronomical costs of military planes and boats? Yep, typical U.S., you know, using our taxpayer money to just fund wars. Let's go. Just more wars. Yeah. In my opinion, I think we should put our money into things that can expand technology and make the world a better place for everyone. Ding, FIFA president. Have you heard of the Denver airport conspiracy? When the Denver International Airport was constructed to replace Stapleton Airport, questions arose as to why a replacement was necessary. Consequently, numerous conspiracy theories emerged, suggesting that the airport is under the control of powerful entities such as the Freemasons, the New World Order, or even the Illuminati. Interestingly, the construction took way longer than expected, with a delay of 16 months and an additional cost of $2 billion. A construction That's worker a claimed that this was due to the construction of five levels and a network of underground tunnels beneath the airport. Now let's dive into some weird aspects of the airport. For instance, the airport has a multi-million dollar underground baggage transportation system that was never used. Was it just a cover-up for the true use of those funds? The airport also features an underground level labeled as level three in the elevators. What mysteries might lie on the other levels? Subscribe for part two. Things are about to become even more. Honestly, I wouldn't doubt if they have other layers of buildings under the airport, bro. What do you think? Do you think that's true? Put it down in the comments. Here's how they made the razor box from Saw 2. The way that the trap works is you have this woman and she's trying to get the antidote from inside the box. And she thinks the easiest way to do this is to stick her hands through these holes right here. But she doesn't realize that there are razor blades that once she puts her arm through, the only way that she can get her arm out is by pulling it down and it's just cutting into her skin, mm. leaving both of her wrists trapped in the box bleeding. From the special mm. effects side, this is pretty simple. Obviously, the razors are not real razors. The actress is just pulling her wrists down against a rubber piece. However, they did actually have the issue of how is she going to actually pull her wrists out of the box? The props department came up with this clever contraption. You see, they have these little cups down here that they can actually push up into the box. Pushing this cup up makes all of the razors sit against the sides and she can freely pull her wrist back down. Also, once they started pumping in the fake blood, they realized that it left this really cool red sheen across the actress's face. This was not pre-planned. They just realized it as they were building the trap and it just made for really iconic shots in this movie. It's actually pretty cool. I saw Saw X the other day. It was amazing. I don't know. I really liked the movie. So if you want a movie to watch, watch the new Saw movie. It was pretty good. Of course I could spoil Piggy for you. The ultimate question is, would you save your bully's life if you had the chance? The movie starts off with a girl named Sarah who is nicknamed Piggy by her bullies. Damn. She works at her family-owned meat shop. Her bullies decide to visit her and buy some meat. One of the bullies named Claudia used to be Sarah's ex-best friend, by the way. The bullies take a photo mm. of Sarah and her family, posting it with the hashtag, the three little pigs. Sarah then decides to take a swim in the public pool by herself, but then is 
strange man emerges out of the pool out of nowhere. The bullies unexpectedly show up and make a joke that that's Sarah's boyfriend, and then torment her with a swimming pool net, forcing her underwater and almost unaliving her. While Sarah's underwater, the scene shows that there's an unalived body at the bottom of the pool that she doesn't notice. The strange man leaves the pool, followed by the bullies who steal Sarah's backpack and clothes. Sarah has to walk home in her bathing suit and is tormented by some boys on the way home. Then she sees the same strange man in a white van with one of her bullies, Claudia, in it, screaming for help that she's been kidnapped. But Sarah basically goes, y'all be safe. I'm leaving while making intense, intimate eye contact with the kidnapper. Like, yes, daddy, kidnap my bullies. Oh. Sarah returns home and doesn't tell anyone about what she saw, all while her mom just walks in on her having a shower because she doesn't respect her privacy. The police in the town finally discover that the pool's lifeguard has been found unalived and the three girls have gone missing. But Sarah just denies everything and says that she wasn't even at the pool that day. Her mom knows she's lying though. Sarah finally remembers that the bullies took her phone and then she can probably track where the bullies are if she can find her phone. She successfully tracks her phone and backpack down while in the forest, but encounters the kidnapper hiding there. He warns Sarah to be quiet, and then they kind of have a cute little moment before he leaves because he's a kidnapper on the run, and he doesn't even try to kidnap her. So thoughtful. That night, Sarah plays DJ with herself, and she thinks of the kidnapper's face the whole time. She's down bad. At this point, the parents of the three bullies who have gone missing are going searching for their children, and they end up discovering a body of a missing waitress. As Sarah returns home, she runs into Pedro, a friend of the missing girls who's also kind of cool with her. They indulge on the devil's lettuce together before he tells Sarah that he knows that she was at the pool that day because the bullies had sent a video in the group chat of them tormenting Sarah. He tells Sarah that the townspeople mm. think that he's the one who's responsible for their disappearance and that Sarah needs to come clean to the police about what she saw. While Sarah wasn't home, the kidnapper came to Sarah's house and attacked her father. Sarah comes home to her mom who still doesn't know that the kidnapper was there. The kidnapper attacks her mom before forcing Sarah to come with him in his white van. He takes her to a warehouse where Sarah finds two of the bullies restrained at the top of the ceiling. While the kidnapper isn't in the room, Sarah tries to save them, and this girl still calls Sarah an idiot. The audacity. Sarah isn't able to free them on time before the kidnapper comes back in the room, and she also sees the third girl's unalived body on the ground. The kidnapper tries to manipulate Sarah into unaliving the other two bullies before Sarah attacks him. Out of self-defense, his weapon accidentally goes off, and Claudia's hand becomes obliterated. Sarah lunges at the kidnapper and takes a big chomp out of his neck and unalives him. Wow. She the weapon been pointing it at the two girls. It fires and there's a moment of silence before we see what happens. Turns out she aimed at the chains that were restraining them on their hands, freeing them. Sarah leaves and begins walking away <clears throat> before encountering Pedro who gives her a- Oh, that movie sounds crazy, yo. That was pretty good. But that's crazy though. She tried to save that one girl. That one girl started calling her an idiot. I'd have been like, you know what, bitch? You could die. You could just die. Morbid facts. Part 364. <laughs> when Theo Vaughn was born in 1980, his dad, Roland, was 70 years old. Wow. Theo says he was always afraid to develop a relationship with Roland because he knew his dad would die when he was at a young age. His father ended up dying in an accidental shooting accident when Theo was 16 years old. British man Andrew Haig was sentenced to life in prison earlier this year after beating his 50-year-old neighbor to death with a bag of Pokemon cards. The two had gotten into an argument after Haig's neighbor accused him of being a pedophile. In 2012, Texas nurse Kimberly Sains was sentenced to life in prison after killing five of her patients by injecting bleach into their dialysis lines. Here are some of the distress calls that were painted onto houses during Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Many refused to evacuate their homes because they weren't allowed to bring any pets into sheltering areas. The Category 5 hurricane ended up taking the lives of around 1,400 people and 500,000 pets. Think of the worst possible way to die, and this beats it. Oof, okay, what is it? This man was running from the cops, and he ended up at this grocery store, climbed up on the roof, and they had helicopters, tons of cops all around, and they were looking for him, right? Could not find him. And they're like, where'd he go? He disappeared. Right. And so they just like called off the search or whatever, right? And a few days later, there's people complaining of this weird smell, like, uh, like near the entrance of the grocery store, and they thought it was like leaky pipes or something, right? So they got a plumber to come in, and they broke down some of the wall on one of the main pillars yeah. and they saw a shoe and a leg. No. And what happened is he'd gotten up and he had climbed through some opening and then I yeah, guess Yeah, like he, now he's in the roof. Yeah, so uh -huh. he got into the roof yeah. and then I guess he made his way down that pillar that way to like hide from the cops, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And he just got stuck. They said they found him like with one arm above oh, him and he 
oh my couldn't gosh, get out. Bro. Like, imagine just being stuck in there and you can't move. You're slowly dehydrated, hungry, and you're just that's like glitching in a video game like you ever had those games where you fell through the map where you just glitch into a building you're just stuck yeah nah that should be a horrible way to die bro there's been an absolutely horrific murder this week that was live streamed on instagram Damn. this case is extremely disturbing so please be warned before watching on friday 12,000 people watched a bosnian bodybuilder kill his wife on instagram live mm -mm. 35 year old nermin had been abusing his wife during their marriage and the pair had a young child on Friday morning, he took to Instagram Live to tell his followers that they could witness a live killing. Absolutely horrifically, he turns the camera to his ex whose face is completely covered in blood and disfigured. He calls Why, her a bro? derogatory name and blames her for her own death because she reported him to police. Disturbingly, you can hear the child crying in the background. He then tells his followers that he's the child's father and his ex had hidden the toddler from him for over a week and reported him to police for DV. So in my opinion, yes, she's taking steps to keep her and her child safe from you. After shooting his wife in the head on Instagram, he then goads his followers saying, someone come and save the child. Mm -mm. A police chase then began and he went on a shooting rampage. He continued to film and tells his viewers that he's killed two other people who actually turned out to be an innocent man and his young son. He also wounded a police officer, another man and a woman while on the run. He ended up unaliving himself. Oh, that's messed up. Now the kid has no dad, no mom, no younger brother. Like, wow, bro. Did all that for what? RIP those victims. This man tortured people in unspeakable ways, all because of a dark secret. Let's talk about Alexander of Brennenberg from Amnesia, The Dark Descent. Disturbing content ahead. Alexander is the baron of the castle that the game takes place in. However, he's much more than just a nobleman. Alexander is actually an otherworldly being that is centuries old. He was banished from the otherworld to Earth and he's been trying to find a way home for hundreds of years. That's where the torture comes in. This is Vitae and it's what Alexander hoped to use to return home. Humans secrete Vitae into their bloodstream during extreme amounts of pain, suffering, and fear. So for hundreds of years, Alexander would bring people to his castle, torture them and extract their vitae. However, it didn't stop there, as remember, the name of the game is Amnesia. Eventually, after enough time, humans get used to things like pain and fear. So in order to keep torturing people and extracting vitae, he would give them an amnesia serum. That way they could experience all of that pain and fear again for the first time. Is that actually real? Do humans actually like extract that or is that just like a game? Cause I'm not sure what he said, but like if that's real and someone actually did that, that's crazy, bro. There's five signs that a horror movie might suck. I saw Straw Hat do something similar to this and I figured, hey, why not add my little two cents? The first sign that a horror movie might be dog shit is when the trailer is too long. Hmm. Granted, this could go for any movie, but we're just talking about horror movies right now. Even though this can go for any movie, I feel like this goes more so for horror movies, mainly due to the fact that horror movies have to have some sense of mystery and the unknown in order for it to work right. There's no reason why a horror movie trailer should be any longer than two and a half minutes. And even that's kind of pushing it. But when the trailer feels like they tell you the entire movie and the trailer is like they're trying to convince you to watch it, it's probably trash. Here's another one based on true events. Listen, nine times out of 10, if they say it's based on true events, it's cap. Don't <laughs> even believe it. The last based on true events horror movie that was good, in my opinion, was probably The Conjuring 2 from 2016. But yeah, saying that it was based on true events is just a cop out to try to make the movie seem scarier than what it really is. Oh, uh, here's one. Adding important jump scares in the trailer. Why would you ruin was probably the best scare of the entire movie in the trailer. So when we actually go see the movie and the scare happens, it doesn't even have the same effect. One perfect example of a movie that did this would be Smile. However, I really like Smile and Smile was like my favorite horror movie of last year next to like Terrifier 2, but they really pissed me off when they did that because watching the movie, watching this jump scare would have been so much better had I not known it was coming. Now this one is kind of debatable, but some people would argue that if the horror movie is PG-13, it's probably going to suck. Mm -hmm. Let the record show that the movie that scared me the most was The Grudge in 2004, and that movie was PG-13. If the subgenre of the horror movie that's coming out does not call for blood and gore, then it being PG-13 really ain't that big of a problem. Now, you drop on a demonic possession movie, a slasher movie, or something like that, and it's PG-13, 
when the marketing kind of meat rides the director or the producers of the projects a little too much like you forcing this hole from the studio that brought you insidious a little too much i'm gonna start to get a little weary of you bro because what that sounds like to me is oh that movie was good so this one must be good right <clears throat> no not always the case but yeah there y'all go man there go some signs that a horror movie might be trash please take some of these with a grain of salt because they don't apply to every single movie however based on a general consensus of films it's pretty accurate and y'all comment below if there's some other signs that you know of that i didn't mention i'm not gonna lie i'm the type of person to see pg-13 and be like all right that horror movie is definitely garbage i'm not gonna lie something very strange happened to tiktoker by the name of alfred not alfredo before going to sleep he noticed something very strange on his wall he's able to see images upside down of his neighbors a whole projection of his neighbor's house on his wall let's check out the video and let me know what you guys think pay close attention Okay, so I noticed this right here and I was like, why does this look like bushes? And then I realized, I thought this was just like the curtains, the little curtain square right there. And then I was like, you could see the cars drive by and I just figured it was just lights. And then I just happened to turn the camera upside down and I realized that's my neighbor's Wow. House. That's their car. This is the sky. Wow. You can see the car. That's trippy. That's John. That's John walking across. That's you can see his pants. But like it's in color. I'm not gonna lie, that's actually really crazy. Wow. That's like a glitch in the matrix. The book held secrets so unsettling it was erased from history. Uncover the truth in the Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch might just be telling the truth. We've always been told that it was removed from the biblical canon around the 4th century because it didn't conform with other sacred texts. But have we ever considered the other possibility? What if its removal wasn't due to inconsistencies, but rather because it held a too disturbing truth about human history that the religious authorities of the time didn't want to reveal? The Book of Enoch tells an unsettling tale of rebellious angels, known as the Watch who defied God. They not only taught humans forbidden knowledge like astrology and the crafting of devastating weapons, but took it a step further by committing the sinful act of copulating with human women. From these mm. unholy unions, the Nephilim were born, creatures that were half angel, half human. Many skeptics dismiss the book as a mere fabrication, but if we carefully examine the world around us, the position of the sun and moon in the sky, and even the current distribution of guardian angels according to certain beliefs, we might wonder if the Book of Enoch is closer to reality than we think. Scariest facts you didn't know. Part 213 The world's most widely documented demonic possession that landed in the 1936 issue of Time magazine is that of Emma Schmidt, also known by her pseudonym Anna Ackland. Schmidt was an American woman born March 23, 1882, in Switzerland and raised in a Catholic household in Marathon, Wisconsin. When she turned 14, she began taking to unspeakable sexual acts and speech and became averse to everything blessed or religious, including churches. In 1935, it was revealed that her Aunt Minna, a purported witch and lover of her father, Jacob, had cast a spell on her through the food she prepared for the young girl. Damn. At the age of 30, Schmidt was exercised for the first time by a Capuchin priest named Friar Theophilus Riesinger. What I'm trying to figure out is how do they know that someone put a spell into her food? Like they're like, they're like, yeah, when she was 14, she had food with a spell in it, and then she uh, got possessed. Like, how do they know that? It was not a presidential tweet, but a text that lit up cell phones and social media today. It was the first test of the National Wireless Presidential Emergency Alert System. It was only a test. Today's alert actually was a test of an alert that would be sent by the president to give advance warning of a national crisis like a terror attack or a missile about to hit the United States. It's similar to the local amber and weather alerts sent to mobile phones. Planning for the alert system began in 2006. Officials say if you do ever see a real presidential alert, pay attention. FEMA's Antoine Johnson take those things very seriously when they come across your mobile device or it appears on radio and television. Uh, they're not the type of alerts uh, that should be ignored at any time. 
Well, FEMA said today the test was successful. Phone carriers, including T-Mobile, told us it may have taken up to 30 minutes for alerts to go through, but T-Mobile said it had no problems outside of that. Now, Jeff, if you were on an active phone call at the time of the alert, you might not have gotten it, but otherwise you cannot opt out. Yeah, I got that today. I was like, Burr! I was like, what the? I was driving right next to a cop. I was like, what the? And I was like, oh, it was just a test. That absolutely pissed me the fuck off. off. Nobody asked for this list, but hey, I can't praise movies all the time. Sometimes it's okay to shit on them. <laughs> like The Nun from 2018. Man, this movie was so goddamn gassed up, man. In The Conjuring 2, they made it seem like The Nun was finna be the biggest, baddest motherfucker in horror ever. Man, this movie came out and I wanted to walk out of the theater. But I couldn't because I was just sitting there waiting like, hopefully it gets better, but it never fucking did. Damn. And the fact that they're making a second one this year is just pissing me off. And what made me even more mad is the fact that The Nun is the highest grossing film in the Conjuring universe. Oh shit. Pray for the devil from last year. Granted, this movie shouldn't have made me mad because I had no expectations for it. But when I saw the movie, it was worse than I thought. Bro, the movie had a girl that was possessed trying to exercise herself. What the fuck? Hey, I could have left that shit on the goddamn writing board. Like, that was terrible, bro. Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 2022. That bullshit that went to Netflix. Boy, y'all need y'all. I don't think I saw that one. Beat down for real but that movie was so goddamn terrible it was laughable and you can tell they were trying to copy halloween come on now you rebooted the franchise had the original final girl come back for a cameo seriously i know <laughs> what the fuck y'all was doing and you took a l it was terrible not to mention you brought the final girl back just to kill her after like three minutes of her being on screen <laughs> jeepers creepers reborn listen after that abysmal ass shit don't make another jeepers creepers movie ever don't do it if i even see another poster or preview for another jeepers creepers movie i'm driving up to the studio and i'm causing havoc stop playing in my face like this and lastly i know i'm about to gain everybody's support on this one halloween ends i don't give a damn if i don't ever see michael myers on screen ever again leave it where the fuck it is this shit was horrible in fact y'all honestly could have just ended it with halloween 2018 everything that happened in halloween kills and halloween ends could have happened in halloween 2018 should have just deaded it right then and fucking there all right so there goes my horror movies that pissed me the fuck off yeah i never seen the halloween movie but i heard from everyone the 20 and 28 and the newest one i heard that they're all terrible if you've seen it put it down in the comments and if you've seen any of these movies that he mentioned also put it down in the comments let me know your experience angelus actually exists angelus, angels? yes you heard that right for centuries millions of people have claimed to have seen angels but none had any proof to support this claim but what if i told you that the existence of angels has actually been proven in 2022 brandon smith a man from kentucky decided that he wanted to prove the existence of angels he had heard about numerous theories claiming that some had been spotted in antarctica in the past so he decided to embark on a long boat journey from the United States to Antarctica. He explored for months without finding anything of interest, but one day he saw a strange mountain, so he approached it, and what he saw will leave you speechless. He saw something that looked like a tunnel leading inside the earth. He decided to go as deep as possible, and after walking for five hours, he discovered a massive civilization of angels. He chose not to interact with these beings, but decided to record a video. Then he left and returned outside the tunnel. However, military soldiers were waiting for him at the exit, and what they did to him will shock He saw angels and he got a video of it? I want to see the video, I'm not gonna lie. If I were to rank every single Michael Myers mask from worst to best, this is how it would go. Coming in dead last, we got the mask from Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Now, it's it, it like pretty self-explanatory. This shit, it looks fucking horrible. At number 10, we got the mask from Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Now, it's not just the mask, it's, it's everything. Yo. Like, bro, he don't even look like he want to kill motherfuckers. He look like he just wants to eat. E E E oh fat ass. At number nine we got the mask from Halloween Resurrection. Now I don't got no complaints about it. It's, it. This is just where it ranks compared to every other mask that I've seen. Actually no, I do got complaints. Not about the mask, but about the movie itself. Why? Why the fuck was Buster Rhymes in a Michael Myers movie? At number eight we got the mask from Halloween two. Now Halloween two is actually one of my favorite Halloween films of all time, but the mask. No, not at all. At number seven, we got the mask from Rob Zombie's Halloween film. Now, I really fuck with the mask and like all the costume designs and shit from his movies, but Rob Zombie's actual Halloween movies itself, no, I don't fuck with them bitches at all. At number six, I got the mask from Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Now, I'm sorry, I know it looks plain, it looks pretty boring, but I really fuck with this mask. From the long hair being pulled back to the eyes being black as shit to where you can't see him, like just... I don't know, it's plain, but I fuck with it. He doesn't look like a crackhead, and that's all that matters to me. At number five, we got the mask from Halloween <laughs> H2O. Now, I only got one thing I don't fuck with when it comes to this mask, and it's just the fact that his hair is, like, super short, and it just, 
it looks fucked up like michael looks like a legit crackhead right now but other than that the little wear on the mask the eyes being exposed just it, it's pretty fucking solid at number four we got the mask from halloween ends now i fuck with this mask just for the simple fact that this is pretty much like a trophy and a symbol of michael's journey like bruh everything that has happened to michael within this timeline it's reflected on the mask every time he's gotten shot every time he's gotten burnt every time he's gotten stabbed well i wouldn't say those are reflected on the mask but you guys understand what i'm saying this mask is pretty much just a perfect representation of the past like 45 years of michael myers's fucking life at number three we got the mask from halloween kills now look i don't care what anybody says this shit looks fucking good looks muy bueno one could say bon appetit another could say i well i don't think that makes sense but basically <laughs> you guys get the gist this mask is fucking perfect the battle wounds the scar the black eyes just everything about this shit it's fucking perfect at number two we got the one that started it all the mask from the original halloween film from 1978 yeah this mask is plain it's simple but that doesn't fucking matter this shit it, it's fucking perfect nearly perfect and at number one in my opinion the greatest michael myers mask we have ever fucking gotten the one from the 2018 Halloween remake. Look, this mask, it's fucking beautiful. It's aged up perfectly. It, it's got all the right color shading, just everything about this shit. It looks fucking good. Anyways, that's my ranking of every single Michael Myers mask we have ever seen. Nah, he's not lying. That was pretty good. That was pretty good ranking, bro. That's pretty good ranking. I only really seen like three of the Halloween movies. If you like the Halloween movies, put them down in the comments. There exists a secret island populated by dinosaurs. It's literally Jurassic Land in real life. A few days ago, Chinese scientists discovered an anomaly in the Pacific. They then stumbled upon a completely unknown archipelago. China sent a 15-person expedition to this uncharted land. They made another startling discovery. Real dinosaurs. So far, they claim to have observed two new species of dinosaurs. And one of these species resembles a killing machine, something we've never seen before. Something astonishing. The scientific world is in shock. Could this archipelago possibly be located beyond the ice wall? Many believe that Earth is much larger than it's portrayed. This dinosaur discovery raises numerous questions about what we know about our planet and challenges the accuracy of our current maps. But that's not all. An incredible discovery was recently made. Who knows what else we might uncover? So stay tuned to follow this incredible journey and the revelations this island could unveil. This old clip of the Jigsaw Killer himself, Tobin Bell, talking to a little kid is going viral. But not only that, the kid asked him, do you want to play a game? <laughs> Tobin says, yes, how about this? And gives him a fist bump. And then for the second part of the game, pulls him in for a handshake. And that's basically where the video ends. Every story I hear about somebody meeting Tobin Bell, it's always completely lovely. So this does not take me by surprise at all. This is another one of my favorite interactions caught on camera. Look at his... The side of his face, how happy he is. Look with this little Billy. That's adorable. I know I said this like for the 100th time, but the Saw, the new Saw, Saw X is a fire movie. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. The earth might be larger than we thought. For four years, scholars and conspiracy theorists alike have debated the shape of the earth, round or flat. This could all be part of an elaborate conspiracy, but consider an even more extraordinary possibility. What if the earth had more than just seven continents? Could Antarctica be more than a frigid wilderness? Instead, a colossal ice barrier concealing our world's true extent? Imagine a hidden realm beyond this ice wall. A world with 20 unexplored continents waiting to be discovered. What if an ancient map exists, locked away, that could reveal their locations? Rumors persist that these lost continents are home to wonders beyond imagination. Prehistoric beasts roaming lush landscapes, extraterrestrial beings communicating with advanced civilizations, and undiscovered treasures hoarded by the elite. Perhaps the seven continents we inhabit are merely part of a grand design, a business venture controlled by a handful of disgustingly rich families. Hey man, it's like my video posted this week. I was like, bro, the Rockefellers and the Rothschild family, they're scary, but they own everything. Honestly, they probably own that. If that's real, probably them. <laughs> the Freemasons, all them new. All right, so the tweet says, who would you add to the horror icon Mount Rushmore? They got Jason, Michael, and Freddy on there. These options is respectful. I think this, goes without saying you know what i'm saying but who would be at the number fourth spot i got three options and at the end of the video i'm gonna pick the one that i think should go up there so for the first person i got pinhead pinhead is iconic the hellraiser franchise has 11 films meaning he has enough on his resume for consideration plus pinhead has given us some of the most quotable lines i've actually never history, seen that so i think he deserves a spot in the voting block next person i would consider would be chucky chucky has seven films all of them pretty decent i wouldn't call them iconic all of them but for the most part they're pretty good not to mention he has a pretty successful tv show as well 
Something that honestly, I don't think any other horror icon could really pull off like that. Chucky is a fan favorite amongst horror fans and amongst movie fans, period. So I think Chucky is a good consideration too. Chucky's now good. my last consideration, and I ain't gonna lie, this one's kind of hard. Would be Ghostface. Ghostface has a total of six films and one MTV TV show. And unlike Chucky, his TV show wasn't that great. Chucky's was pretty <laughs> good, but Scream show, it was all right. However, what makes Ghostface pretty strong in this competition is the fact that to this day you can still see him on the big screen. Scream 5 came out last year and it was a hit. Scream 6 came out this year and it was a hit. Pinhead got a remake on Hulu and it was bullshit. <laughs> Currently Chucky just has his TV show. But when looking at all three of the considerations for the fourth spot of the horror Mount Rushmore man I think I'm gonna have to go with Ghostface. And Ghostface is getting Scream 7 so he is not done yet at all. So it's official for me the horror icon Mount Rushmore will be Jason, Michael, Freddy and Ghostface. The Serbian dancing lady. I haven't seen her a lot. Oh, hey, hey, hey. You guys, what? I feel so bad for that girl right now because that's the Serbian dancing lady. Also known as Mira or the dancing shadow. The Serbian lady is a mysterious old woman who is normally seen dancing in the middle of the night in a dark alleyway or road. People are saying that if you ever disturb her while you see her dancing, then she'll chase you. No. Rumors were going around saying in Serbia that this woman was captured and put away, but then she unalived herself. Wow. People talk about a game that you play to call upon her spirit. In this game, you're supposed to go to a dark road and do the dance that she always does and repeat her name, Mira. It says that after doing this for a complete minute, the Serbian dancing lady will appear on the road. It says that you should not interrupt her while she's doing the dance. Hey. But if you do, then she'll chase you and you need to run back to your house before she gets to your house. I wonder what really goes on with the Serbian dancing lady. Like, is it like some spirit or is it just like someone randomly just dancing, sees someone and then just chases them? I don't know. If you know, put it down in the comments. Y'all, so according to this person, Halloween ends is better than Scream 6. Not by a little bit, but by a country mile. Hmm. <laughs> That is fucking insane to say the least. Let, let me just go ahead and give you guys my little two cents on this take. Did we see Michael or Corey's little bitch ass hold a fucking shotgun? Matter of fact, matter of fact, did we see Michael or Corey's little bitch ass one pump somebody with one fucking hand? No, we didn't. Halloween Ends didn't do nothing but disappoint people that were excited to see the fucking movie. When this trailer first dropped, a bunch of people, myself included, thought we were gonna get one of the best Halloween films we have ever fucking seen. But that's not what we got at all. In fact, it's one of the worst Halloween <laughs> films we have ever fucking seen. It was a huge fucking disappointment, bro. But then when the trailer for Scream dropped and then the actual movie itself dropped, you're like, damn. The, the trailer actually lived up to the fucking hype. At the end of the day, I'm all for respecting opinions, but this one right here... Nah, I'm not gonna respect it. I'm not acknowledging it. It's not my tribal chief. It ain't shit to me. If you personally think Halloween Ends is better than Scream- Yeah, I've still never seen any of those movies, if I'm being honest. Which one do you think is better? Put it down in the comments. In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the holder of sanity. I'm good. The receptionist will look at you strangely, but you must repeat the same question and nothing else. Eventually, she will call for a doctor, and you will be taken to the room in the furthest corner of the institution. Beware, for after this point there is no turning back. And if you wish to leave then, tell the doctor that you are sorry, and must not have taken your medication today, and leave. Run as far away as you can, outside of the city limits, outside of the country limits, for cowards are not spared if caught. If you continue on, you will be put into a straitjacket and locked in a padded room. After a few days that will seem like months, you will start to hear voices, hundreds of them, all talking about how their lives were ruined. Their stories may drive you mad, and you would have to stay there for all eternity, for in your padded room, there is no death, only torture. If the voices stop talking, close your eyes tight, and shout at the top of your lungs, I will not share your stories. If the voices do not resume, Pray that the pain you will next feel will not be so bad, however unlikely that is. If the voices continue talking, single out the voice that speaks of the very hospital you are in. Listen to his story and open your eyes. You will not be in the cell anymore, but still in a straitjacket. Instead, you will be in what seems like an endless void. The only thing separating you from the void, a glass box. A man will appear in front of you and ask if you have any questions. He will respond to one and only one question. Ask, 
what drove them to insanity. He will explain in horrifying detail about the lives and deaths of them. During his response, a large black dot will appear to be moving through the void. But you must not focus your sight on it, for it will shatter the glass box, leaving you to fall into the void for all eternity. Once the man has finished his story, he will remove your straitjacket and bid you farewell. You will find yourself standing outside the institution, holding the straitjacket. The jacket is Object 73 of 538. They say ask this motherfucker, what made people go into, bro, I'm asking this man, how the hell do I get out of here? Nah, that's some schizophrenic shit. Nah, that was crazy. I would never do that, though. Explorers found the Leviathan living at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. In 1960, two men decided to attempt to reach the bottom of the Mariana Trench in this vessel, despite scientists being nearly certain that there would be nothing to discover at the depth of 36,000 feet because of the immense pressure. The explorers were undeterred and continued on with their daring journey. However, after five hours of descent, the men were startled when they began to hear strange noises of something colliding with their ship. To their horror on their monitor, they saw a huge shadow with three heads. When they reported what they saw, the team above dismissed it, attributing it to fatigue and imagining things. It was only upon reaching the surface that the explorers discovered the true extent of the damage. The ship's walls, an impressive five inches thick and designed to withstand enormous pressure, were completely destroyed and battered, bearing witness to the terrifying encounter below. Although most of the crew denied it, the two explorers were certain they had found the mythical creature called the Leviathan. Do you believe? Yeah, that's probably Cap. They did not see no Levi Leviathan, bro. Stop the lies. This is my honest opinion about certain horror movies. The goal is to get controversial, so let's get into it. If there was no Jason Voorhees, there would be no Michael Myers as we know him today. Please hear me out. It is a known fact that John Carpenter did not want Halloween to become a franchise. At least a franchise that focused on Michael Myers. The only reason why Halloween got a sequel featuring Michael Myers is because after the hit success of Friday the 13th in 1980, following up just one year later, in May of 1981 came Friday the 13th part 2 which featured Jason Voorhees for the first time on screen so at this point Friday the 13th had two successful movies in their franchise Friday the 13th was basically a copycat of Halloween so the people at Halloween said oh hell no y'all ain't finna come in here and copy us and then get more popular than us John drop part 2 part 2 of Halloween came out in October of 1981 five months after friday the 13th part 2 meaning most likely it was either planned during friday the 13th part 2's promotion or it didn't even get filmed until after the movie came out trying to keep up with the competition is exactly what michael myers continued to be in the franchise because as soon as john carpenter had a chance to get rid of michael myers for part 3 he did it now tell me i'm lying speaking mm. of friday the 13th part 2 pillowcase jason is the creepiest iteration of jason Voorhees that we've ever gotten he wasn't a zombie he wasn't a half cyborg in space he was a regular inbred looking dysfunctional motherfucker with overalls and a bloody pillowcase creepy as fuck and definitely more realistic than a zombie and speaking of jason iterations the 2009 jason iteration is the most brutal jason that we ever got part two was the scariest 2009 was the most brutal quality wise the 1970s had better horror movies than the 1980s the 80s was just more iconic but those movies were not better than the 70s bro but let's be honest the 80s had a lot of bullshit sinister is one of the most over rated horror movies of all time yep i fucking said it y'all gas this movie way too fucking much bro you know i've watched this movie like three four times just to see if i could catch something that i missed hmm. i didn't miss shit movie just gassed up bro that's all it is back on the halloween train to end this list off halloween 2018 <laughs> is better than halloween 1978 and that's no disrespect to the original i fucking love the original this right here is a holy grail for horror fans but quality wise i gotta admit 2018 was just better that's not a bad thing to say because what's the point of reboot the franchise if the reboot ain't gonna be better than the original it's just that we've gotten so many terrible reboots and remakes that when a reboot or a remake is actually better than the original it sounds crazy to say but yeah 2018 was better all right child there goes some more of my honest opinion about certain horror movies i really hope this list didn't rile up too many feathers but if it did good fucking job like always, the u.s government finally admitted that there are aliens yesterday what no way dude they had this hearing right where this guy in the military came out talked about the fact that for the past like 40 years we have had <clears> operations <throat> going on to like retrieve crashed ufos and reverse engineer the technology of them what? he said that there were organic material found in those spacecraft but it's like living uh. organics and non-human 
organics found in these crashed uh, ships. That's crazy. It's like publicly like broadcast. Yes. Everywhere. AOC was there asking questions. She was like, we would like to know like names of all these different people that have been like keeping this from yeah. us and all this stuff. And he was like, I will give you a specific list of names and everything. They asked out locations where UFOs might be housed. And he said, after this, I'll give you specific locations on where certain vehicles are, ha are housed. No, good. They asked him if anyone ever gotten hurt, like any of his colleagues, yeah. like in any of these incidents. And he said, yes. And they asked UFO or from the government. And he said both instantly. As Damn. soon as the question left their, their mouth. Man, I would not doubt that, bro. The government be hiding so much stuff, bro. I would not be surprised if they found aliens, if they found freaking underground people, demons, witches, wizards. I would not be surprised, bro. I just realized something really interesting about the carousel trap from Saw 6. So basically in this trap, you have six people riding the carousel. Four of them are gonna get hit with a boomstick and the other two get to survive. And this man on the outside of the carousel gets to decide which two people get to survive. However, if he cannot decide in time, all six will get eliminated by the boomstick. Now, why are they being tested? Because they all work for an insurance company. These six people are the people who decide who gets the coverage and who doesn't. And the man who they're depending on to try to save them is William Easton, the CEO of this insurance company. The importance of this trap is to teach these people that all life has value and meaning. Everyone deserves healthcare coverage regardless of pre-existing conditions or disabilities. But the thing that I just realized, the reason why they give the option for him to save two people is because his insurance company approves one third of all medical claims. Damn. So they only save a third of their people. That's why he can only save a third of them. Or much like his insurance company, he can choose to save none of them. Fun fact, because I like Saw X so much, I actually went back and watched the series. So yesterday I actually saw Saw 6 and I saw that, I was like, interesting. So now that she explained it, that made more sense. You know this video is gonna show up at night for you, I don't care. You tell that there is something deeply wrong with this photo. It's discovered in a hidden lockbox after her grandfather had passed and the woman who found it, Michaela Jerome, she thought the same thing that you did. There's something that's kind of off about this picture. Very yeah. quickly, if you're not already, make sure to go check out my podcast, the scariest one you know, Creep Time the Podcast. Can use the link in my bio, we're on Spotify and Apple. Well, the photo, she was almost sure, clearly showed the staircase of her family home, but she couldn't be sure about what this was in the center until she enhanced the photo. A hauntingly clear image of what wow. appears to be a woman clawing her way up those stairs. She eventually turned in this photo for analysis with the police, and it took them four months, but they determined that this was more than likely a scenario of captivity. If her grandfather did take this picture, he had this woman in his possession. I feel like that's such an iconic picture of the girl crawling up the stairs like the ring. But I don't know. Is it real? I don't really think it's real. Do you guys think it's real? Put it down in the comments. Tell you how it became the prince of a town called Bel -Air.
Damn, Drake? Yeah, I don't know. I think that was just like for performance, but that looked kind of cool though. What do you guys think? Do you guys think Drake sell his soul? Put it down in the comments. And his album dropped today, so that's crazy. Let me know what you guys think about that new Drake album. But anyways, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video. This like goal is 1,000. If you like the chain, remember that these are free for a limited time only, so check the link down below. We also got sunglasses on the website. If you guys like stuff like that, check the link down below. Also check those out. Things caught on dash cam. cam. In this 2014 dash cam footage, a man is driving his car in the middle of the night through a very dark road. The driver proceeds down the highway with everything going on as expected when suddenly, an odd and suspicious roadblock can be seen ahead, only consisting of two traffic cones and a single parked car. A mysterious man then exits the car and attempts to flag down the driver. Distrustful, the driver slows down but quickly speeds up again, as he notices the unknown man attempting to reach something mm. in his pocket. That 100% was a setup. Anything that's involved with cones and motherfuckers just getting out of the car and wanted to be like, oh, hello, 100% a setup. Did this USS Eldridge teleport over the sea? In 1943, the US Navy conducted a secret experiment in the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard, aimed at making the USS Eldridge invisible to radar. According to the legend, the experiment was a success, but it had a number of unintended side effects, including teleportation and time travel. Many people claim to have witnessed the experiment, and some even say that they were on board the USS Eldridge during the test. They describe the ship disappearing and reappearing in different location, as well as crew members being fused into the metal of the ship. The US Navy has denied any involvement in such an experiment and the technology necessary to make a ship invisible to radar did not exist in 1943. However, there was a real-life experiment in 1943, known as Project Rainbow, that was carried out at the Philadelphia Naval Yard. The project was aimed at developing radar-absorbing materials in order to reduce the visibility of ships to enemy radar during World War II. Now I'm looking trying to figure that out because I know they have planes that can go invisible to radar, but like they try to do it with the ship and motherfuckers start fusing together. Is that even a real story? If you know, put it down in the comments. Scary moments caught on live TV. On the 20th of August 1987, a man walked onto the set of KNBC yeah. News with a thick going and forced the news anchor to read a message about CIA conspiracy theories and aliens on live TV. Pardon me? What is this? Let me see what it says. Folks, we have, we have someone on the set who's standing here and would like me to read um, to read this, uh, this, this copy which was just handed to me. You know, it was like the Twilight Zone. I didn't know what was going to happen and I didn't realize, I said to myself, this is not really happening to me. Imagine just at your job and someone just comes up to you with a gun telling you, yo, you better read this or you're going to get shot. Nah, he did say it was a fake gun though, but still, it's like, why, bro? Creepiest ghost stories that turned out to be true. I was about seven years old, my brother about 10. It was well past our bedtime when our mom woke up off the couch to put us to bed. Our dad worked construction out of town back then, so it was often just us three at the house for weeks at a time. Up the stairs and to the immediate right was our parents' bedroom. Going left put you in the middle of a hallway. Taking another left down that hallway led to my brother's room. The opposite end was my room which was also across the hall from our upstairs bathroom. At either end of the hallway are window doors we always kept locked and rarely used. The door on my end led to a balcony overlooking our front yard, and the door on my brother's end opened to our back porch, the house kinda leans into a small hill. My brother and mom both had a habit of waking up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. I only knew this because I was always a light sleeper and they just couldn't help flushing with the door wide open. This night, however, my brother stopped on his way to his room and came back towards the bathroom. I'm gonna try to pee before I go to bed. The past few nights I've been too afraid to walk to the bathroom. I keep seeing a man wearing stripes at the end of the hallway. I don't know if my mom wrote it off as my brother telling ghost stories to try to scare me or if she was already half asleep and didn't catch it, but she didn't react at all to my brother's confession. I, on the other hand, was terrified by it. The fear of seeing a ghost like that at the end of the hallway or through the windows is the reason I started running from the stairs to my bedroom at night. These are videos humans were never meant to see. Part 6 This man, whose name is Stephen McDaniel, is a confessed killer who is getting interrogated. And during the whole two hour interrogation, he kept his body disturbingly still. This video is extremely disturbing and just straight up weird. Mm. Mm. 
That looks kind of weird. It's been 40 minutes and he's just like... Nah, that one was kind of odd because you're watching the time lapse as it's going quicker and you just see like everyone like, mm, you know, but he's just like, what? Disturbing rituals caught on camera. In this 2021 footage, two friends are in the middle of a cemetery exploration at night in Mexico. They start by observing the tombstones when suddenly, one of them notices something odd in the distance. As the camera focuses, the guys notice a group of people wearing cloaks around mm -hmm. a big fire, <laughs> performing some kind of strange ritual. The explorers keep observing the ritual, but unfortunately for them, one of the men notices their presence. Mira, mira, mira. Acá, 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 acá. And the whole congregation begins to chase the explorers through the cemetery. Me personally, I could have been vlogging, making content. I'd be like, what the f take a picture of it and just dip. I wouldn't even try to let them see me, but gonna get some juice first. Gonna get some juice first. My soul left my body. Wow, bro. Okay. Hello? No way, no way, no way, no way, no, no way, no way. Going on. Oh, no, 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 no,
A man walks around the house while three children are sleeping in couch feet away from him. Told y'all. He walks around them looking for just outside. Damn. And he was armed? Damn. But never found the two men in the video. Damn, bro. They would have lightly been unalived. Yo, that's crazy. It literally said these two men broke into their house, started looking around. People were sleeping right in front of them. They had guns on them, too. And then they're just stealing stuff like nothing happened. You know, at least it, he, they weren't crazy and just like blicked them for no reason. But still, that's kind of weird. Just coming into people's house like that. What's your thoughts about that one? Because that one's kind of weird. These are the worst ways people, people have, have ever died. died. Wow. A 72 year old Kentucky woman died after a Denny sign crushed her car. She was just sitting there when suddenly the big massive sign fell onto her car, completely crushing her and killing her. Damn. Denny's is completely aware of the situation and they have no response to why this even happened. Getting crushed to death by a Denny sign has to be one of the weirdest ways somebody has ever died. Hmm, I know worse. Honestly, death by Denny sign might be a slight bit worse than death by Travis Scott concert. Not gonna lie. Remember the scary story, the creature in the cellar? The story goes like this. There was a little boy named Tommy who was so utterly terrified of his basement. Anytime he was in the kitchen near the cellar door, he would scream and cry and kick and just want to leave. His parents decided to take him to see a therapist. When they asked Tommy why he was so scared of the basement, he just said that he always felt like there was a creature down there trying to get him. Tommy's dad said, that's impossible. I go in the basement every day. I know that there's nothing down there. The doctor then told Tommy's parents to give him exposure therapy, which they basically said, make him sit in front of the cellar door yeah. alone until he's not scared anymore. So that night when it got dark outside, Tommy's dad nailed the basement door open, turned off all the lights and lit a single candle, placed it on the kitchen table and made Tommy sit in the kitchen alone in front of the basement door. That night they went to check on Tommy in the kitchen and found that he had been mutilated and unalived. Nobody ever knew exactly what happened to Tommy, but it's safe to assume that he was attacked by whatever he saw living in the cellar. Yeah, those are terrible parents. I actually heard about that story multiple times. I would feel terrible if I was a parent and did that. But what I'm trying to figure out, though, I was looking at that one picture of that girl walking up the stairs. Is she walking up it or down it? Because I was seeing from both point of views. I was like, is it coming down the steps or going up? What do you think? Put it down in the comments. How many people do you think have gone missing in national parks? A lot. I don't know why, but this really shocked me. Yosemite is one of the most popular national parks in the United States. But over the years, there's been an unusually high number of disappearances in the park, which kind of bring into question the safety of this place. Then just a two year time frame up to 2020, there has been a documented 735 disappearances. 700. The and those are the ones that were reported. <clears throat> I don't know, is, is that like not insane to you? What's even creepier about it is this theory that within the forest of the park are feral humans. Obviously, that's just a theory. There's nothing to substantiate that there is anything like that in this place. The question is, why have so many people vanished in these woods? Why have rescue crews struggled so hard to turn up the remains of those who have disappeared? Is there something going on in Yosemite that we don't know about to explain where all of those people went? There's actually a lot of missing park cases that I've heard about. I know I used to watch a lot of Mr. Ballin back in the day. <clears throat> I still do. And I remember I used to cover like a lot of national park disappearing stories. And I was like, yo, that's crazy. Disturbing things caught on planes. Thanks to an exclusive GoPro clip. This crash was filmed from within their seats. Wow. What I want to show you is the, the kind of camera it was shot on. It's called a GoPro camera. And it is a remarkable, remarkable video. Take a look. The small passenger plane made its crash landing on the way to Hawaii. Landing in the water as everyone got free Damn. and hung on the parts of the plane to keep safe. This clip gives an unparalleled point of view of an ongoing plane crash, unlike anything most people will see, without the terror of actually dealing with it. It was saying that they were showing like an exact representation of what a crash would look like. I would say a good crash, a good crash looks like that, but an actual crash? It gets deadly, man. Plane explodes. <laughs> There's no just getting out and being like, hey, save us. If it's if it's like an actual crash into land, there's no coming back from that one. Dirty facts about history that school probably didn't teach you. Part 19. 
Oscar Wilde was once quoted saying that he was addicted to giving top and said that what it greatly the? inspired him as a writer. The first ever pregnancy test involved injecting a woman's urine directly into a female frog's skin. And if the woman was pregnant, a few hours later, the frog would lay eggs. Paul Revere would ride from Boston to Newport to cheat on his wife. No, babe, the redcoats are actually coming this time. In 1955, the KGB tried to blackmail the president of Indonesia with video footage of him making love with a Russian woman disguised as a flight attendant. Damn. However, this backfired because the president did not care and requested the tape so he could flex on his friends back home. <laughs> Giving someone the finger actually dates back 2,000 years and it used to mean that you were threatening someone with sex. So while today it means fuck you, back then it meant I'm going to fuck you. How do you threaten someone with There's only one thing I could think about when he said that, and that's messed up. If that's really what that meant. Disturbing facts that will ruin your life. A body decomposes four times faster in the water than on land. About 153,000 people worldwide die every day. Damn. Men who are hung get a death erection, known as rigor erectus. The Zoroastrian Parsi community in India offers its dead to vultures rather than burying or burning them. The Turritopsis dorni jellyfish is officially known as the only immortal creature in the world. It lives forever. Wow. Left-handed people die three years earlier than right-handed people. The catacombs of Paris hold the bones and remains of nearly six million people. Mice and rats can spread at least 35 different diseases to humans. That's disgusting. These infections include salmonella, hentavirus, and rat bite fever. Babies grow mustaches in the womb that then spread to cover their entire body in the hair called lanugo. The body hair keeps them warm and also helps regulate body temperature. And don't worry, they shed it for birth. Comment below which fact disturb you. This is the scary truth behind United States dollar bills. Okay, on the United States dollar bills, there are a lot of disasters being predicted. People have found hidden and scary messages in dollar bills by folding them in different ways. Up first is the $50 bill, which many people speculate to be the collapse of the Hoover Dam, which honestly kind of makes sense. Next up is the $20 bill, which mm, predicts the Twin Towers burning and collapsing. This one looks exactly like it, which honestly blows my mind. I can and see finally that. is the $100 bill, which predicts a nuclear explosion. I don't the see smoke that you see is supposed to be the shockwave, and the buildings on this will soon be destroyed. Oh, I kind of so see. So, what it. do you think about uh, all this? Do you think it's just a weird conspiracy, or do you think there's a deeper meaning behind it? I'd say a part of me doesn't really believe in coincidences like that. So, I want to say that there's a possibility because that 9/11 one, I could see the twin towers. Like, I could really see like how that could be a 9/11. But I don't know. What do you think? Put it down in the comments. These are eight horrifying facts that will probably keep you up at night. If given access to it, butterflies will happily drink blood. Astronauts no. must drink 730 liters of recycled sweat and urine to live in space for a year. The hospital bed you were once in had many dead people laying on it. That's Speaking of true. death, 153,000 people die every, every day. day. You're not scared of being alone. You're scared of not being alone when you're supposed to be. After 10 minutes of watching yourself in a mirror, your brain gets bored and distorts your reflection, causing imaginary monsters such as Bloody Mary. Eventually, there will be more dead people on Facebook than alive. More than 7,000 people die every year due to the doctor's bad handwriting. Damn. Yeah, there's a lot more, like for part five. Man, I don't know what's going with doctor, but I feel like almost every doctor I've seen has just terrible handwriting. Like, I don't know if it just runs in the genes or like the doctor course that they take to have terrible, but like most of them usually do not have that great handwriting. Don't ever touch anything. And if you do, let me know. That right there was a warning from Lorraine Warren herself. If you don't know who Lorraine is, her, along with her husband, Ed, were paranormal Conjuring, investigators right? associated with many scary and terrifying cases. One of those cases being Annabelle. In fact, if you've ever seen The Conjuring, yep, this I is knew it. Armiga who played Lorraine Warren in the movie. Get this, Lorraine died in 2019, 13 years mm. after her husband, Ed, had already passed away. Damn. But they both left one of the most haunted and disturbing museums ever known to man. This museum holds some of the most demonic and possessed items that have ever been on Earth. In fact, they have to have a priest come and bless the room ever so often so that nobody will get hurt. If you ever get the chance to visit this museum, do not touch anything, and if you do, tell a priest immediately. To this day, Annabelle still sits in a glass case, waiting for the next person to walk by. Warning. I'm the type of person you tell, yo, do not, do not touch that. I'm like, okay, bet.
Yeah, don't take me there, bro. Don't take me there. Creepy commercials aired, aired on, on TV. TV PT.4. PT. No, I never did that. Well. <laughs> Wrinkles, that's me. The best breakfast under the big top is post sugar rice crinkles. So crinkly, so delicious, so different. Each grain of rice in sugar rice crinkles is crinkled with honey and sugar. It's so good, I crinkle every time I eat it. Yep, no matter what other rice cereal you've ever tried, they didn't crinkle that time. Post sugar rice crinkles, best of all. Honey and sugar make it different and wonderful. A circus of fun to eat. So you crinkle on down to the store for post sugar rice crinkles, the greatest cereal treat on earth. Yeah, I grew up in the color days. I can tell that wasn't really a part of my generation because of the black and white. My generation, color, SpongeBob, Cartoon Network, you know what I'm saying? And what's good with the government trying to push the cereal agenda? You know how terrible cereal is? They're like, cereal is the perfect breakfast. No. First of all, cereal has mad sugar, mad carbohydrates. No protein, like probably one gram of protein. Cereal is the worst thing you could feed someone for breakfast. Maybe switch it up, maybe eat some high protein. Shocking war facts that school definitely didn't teach you, part eight. After the Mexican victory at the Alamo, General Santa Ana felt invincible. So much so that he allowed his soldiers to take a midday siesta. And that's when a single rank of the Texan army snuck up and defeated Damn. the entire Mexican army in 18 minutes. In 1944, when Queen Elizabeth was 18, she was a driver and automobile engine mechanic in an attempt to support the British war effort. Oh, wow. During World War II, Japan built a battleship that was 862 feet long. It was so <laughs> big, in fact, that when it was launched, it sent a four foot tidal wave that flooded Nagasaki. Damn. A Viking chief defeated an Italian Just city by pretending up. to convert to Christianity and die. Before his fake death, he requested that he be given a Christian burial in the city, so they let him in. Once the funeral procession was in, he popped out of his coffin and attacked the city from inside. Damn. My boy used that Trojan horse method. He said, oh yeah, I'm dead. Boom, I'm in. Today we're going to be talking about how The Wizard of Oz is actually considered a cursed movie. Judy, who was only 17, was drugged and molested during the filming wow. of the movie. There has been countless amounts of reports that she was molested and sexually harassed by both the Munchkin actors and studio executives. That's Next, crazy. The actress that plays the Wicked Witch got horrifically burned during filming. During the scene where the Wicked Witch escapes Munchkin land in a plume of smoke, the pyrotechnics team accidentally set off the explosion a little too early. This led to the actor broom, hair, and makeup to catch on fire. Oh, Medics had to use alcohol to remove her toxic makeup, which was extremely painful due to her burns. Yeah, I would like to file a lawsuit. Today we're going to be talking about how The Wizard of Oz is actually considered a cursed movie. Judy was living almost like a slave, allowed only one square meal a day and given adrenaline shots so that she could stay up for as long as 72 hours in a row. And when she was allowed to sleep, she was given sleep pills and was limited to only about two to three hours of sleep every three days. Next, the snow they used in the movie, the scarecrow's full outfit, and the Wicked Witch's broom were all made using something called asbestos. Asbestos is a group of oh, that's six a toxin. naturally occurring minerals made up of heat-resistant fibers, and those fibers cause cancer. D D Man, who the f keep calling me, bro? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna do that lawsuit, by the way. Like, I don't know why they put as asbestos. Like, like I don't know. They're tripping, bro. But anyways, we gonna get a real. Uh, we gonna get a quick bag, real quick. You know, maybe uh, I'm thinking like around ten. Maybe even 10 billion, honestly. That's crazy. Motherfucker, fuck them all night. Yeah, better give me a bag before that. But anyways, remember that these chains are free for a limited time only. Via Flores had posted the following video and states that the footage isn't hers, but rather someone else's. According to her, someone had sent her the video with very little information. Now, the video itself is pretty creepy. The person who sent it states that their sister-in-law was recording a video at a carnival in Africa. However, 
something very strange was caught on camera by the sister-in-law who shot this. It wasn't until later that she noticed what she had caught. Pay very close attention to this one, or you'll miss it. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess bro just saw like a witch. Yo, not gonna lie, I don't think it's even that deep for real. Disclaimer before this video, because this story is very emotionally distressing. It's gonna be about a mother that communicates with her son's spirit. So I didn't want any of y'all walking into anything that you don't want to see. So yeah, this is the warning. At least he warned us. Hope to would never affect my kids. The whole brown outline of his body and his head was here. What? Heavy warning on this episode, because it's going to be deeply disturbing, graphic, and sad. This is Karen McDonald, and this is her son, Michael. He's 27 years old, and he's high-functioning autistic. Many years ago, they moved into a house, and this house has such an unbelievably heavy energy. They would have paranormal experiences, like doors opening and closing, they would see apparitions, but it's nothing that they couldn't handle. But unfortunately, very soon after they moved in, tragedy would strike for the entire family. One day, Michael would go over to his father's house, and it was there he learned to load and shoot. No. Later that day, as he came home, he snuck an antique 38 with him. That night, he went upstairs by himself into the bathroom. He closed the door, stood in the shower, and... Why? Since this incident, the energy in the house just got unbelievably intense. No one could walk up the stairs. When you do, it feels like your body has been plunged into freezing water. You can't get past like the sixth stair. It feels like, you know, when you jump in cold water in your lungs, I get that and I can't breathe. I can't go in there, I can tell you that much. It hurts. <laughs> your neck and chest get tight, and then it feels like you just can't breathe. They can feel Michael's energy and a sorrow that is so intense it puts them to their knees. No one would go up the stairs. But two weeks after the incident, Karen got a strange feeling. Something was calling her to go upstairs and into Michael's room. Following her instincts, she did, and she winded up looking in his closet. It was there she found a note, which I cannot say the contents of, but I can say one thing, and that's that Michael blamed his father. Damn. Everyone around him would start to pass away. Any man that stepped foot in this house would have an untimely passing. Her fiancé, her grandparents, and they would all die. <laughs> Everything is being completely ripped away from Karen. The only person that she has left is her daughter. And to make things worse, they know that their son is trapped in this house. And he's trapped with something that was there before him. Something that is evil. Even just watching episodes on this house, you can feel just how horrible it is in there. This story is absolutely brutal. So they reach out to a crew and psychics to attempt to communicate with Michael. They just want closure and they want to help him move on. So they set up, they wait for it to be night, they walk up to the stairs, turn on the equipment, and start calling out. And Michael is extremely active. Michael, can you see us? Wow. 
long. Getting all of these amazing responses, and then Zach Bagans is sitting on the stairs when he suddenly freaks out. Something grabbed his butt. So he what? tells them what <coughs> happened, and they say, When we were outside, we told Michael to grab you in that exact spot. Oh. Okay, it's okay. Something touched me back here. We asked him to do that. When we were outside, we specifically asked Michael to touch you on your butt. Michael Why? Why are your butt? The activity really and great. emotions are so intense that most of them can't even handle it. And eventually, the psychic gets there and they go into the bathroom. The same bathroom that Michael pulled it not too long ago. He had a mute begins that. to feel Michael's energy <clears throat> and pick up exactly what he was feeling the day of. But suddenly, he picks up something more sinister. That was the mail. It's not good. Mill wants him to stay here. So Mill wants him to stay here, and the woman does it. The woman's trying to help him cross. We don't know what this is, but it's theoried that it could be Karen's husband. But it's likely that there is something else. Because the activity was there before anyone had passed away. I've been doing a ton of looking to try to figure out more about this entire situation. But as far as I know, the last public thing is them clearing the house. They ran through it with Sage and tried to communicate with Michael to let him know that it's okay to leave. I can't find Karen anywhere, so I don't know how she's doing. But I had to share this story because of how crazy it is. Communicating with her lost son. And yeah, sorry for the sad stuff, but you know, sometimes we just gotta do that. And rest in peace to Michael, rest in peace to Karen's husband. I hope that everyone moves on. Damn, bro. His dad showed him how to load a pistol, then he just offed him? So, yo, that's messed up, man. That should be a lot of pressure on the father. I wonder, like, how, as a father, someone would feel, because I'm not a dad, but, like, should be that should be tragic for the whole family. R.I.P. him, may his family recover, and his soul rest in peace. This screen grab posted on the meme droid website by Trollcom1 seems to have captured an especially eerie what? and inexplicable the mirror and then look at her. reflection. While some creepy photos have clear or at least plausible explanations that dismiss any idea of paranormal activity, it seems that even skeptics might have a hard time debunking this one. The photo appears to have been originally posted so the uploader could show off a quilt that she's just made. The girl is seen posing on her bed with the quilt pulled up to her chin. She looks directly at the camera, but she's not the only one to do so. If you take a look at the mirror behind her, you can see that her reflection also appears to be staring at the camera. However, this might not be the case at all. It seems that the girl in the mirror might actually be someone else. At least one keen-eyed viewer thinks he's spotted some very slight differences in the position of the quilt and the girl's face. While a clever Photoshop job might explain the mystery of this photo, there are no indications that it's been edited in any way. Could there really be something supernatural responsible for this bizarre image? Unfortunately, there's very little information available which makes it difficult to comment any further. That said, this is certainly a very creepy photo and without a good explanation, viewers may never know the true identity of the mysterious girl in the mirror. This very strange video is circling the internet of what's supposed to be this very strange phenomena happening in the middle of the ocean. A couple of people inside of a boat captured it on camera. I'm going to show you guys the entire video. Some people are relating this to underwater volcanoes, but I'm not exactly sure if this is the case. I'm going to show you guys the video. You tell me what you think is going on here. Check this out. What is that? <clears throat> oh, that's weird. I'd be terrified if I saw that. Pay attention, look at the size of this thing. Mm -mm. Touch it. <laughs> I would be like, what? <laughs> look at this over here. It does look like dirt though, I'll say that. It does look like dirt. 
going on here, guys? What is your? I know that guy doesn't really think that it's like underwater volcano, but like it does look like dirt. Like if you really look at it, you look, you can see like the little dirt crumbs coming off into the water. But if it's not dirt, I don't know what it could be. I would say a spaceship, but I don't think a spaceship decomposes underwater unless it's supposed to. No. The following video shows footage of a barber shop during business hours when suddenly all the barbers inside the shop encounter something beyond belief. Barber T had obtained this recording from the security camera inside the shop after experiencing this creepy encounter. Here's the footage that was posted by him along with the text speech voice explaining the video's events. Be sure to look closely for this one as something else happens that a lot of viewers miss the first time. Take a look. So we just realized the barber shop is haunted. Mm. I didn't notice the door moved at first. Pay attention to the door. It was all jokes and giggles until My boy John was super spooked, and so was I. The shop is for sale now, if someone is interested. A door all of a sudden opens on its own, and then promptly closes itself seconds later. Nah. It continues to do this until stopping about a minute later. The barbers were left spooked, as seen on camera. Now something else happens in this video that you might have missed. At the start of the video, we see the door opening for the first time. It is around this time though, that a transparent figure passes by the TV. Whatever this is, viewers believe that it may be responsible for the strange activity. But <laughs> things are only getting started because what happens next is just downright creepy. An hour later, one of the barbers approaches the door when the following happens. Imagine he gets sucked in. What you are about to see is some aggressive paranormal activity. Let's see it. I really didn't want to touch the door handle. Yo! Yo, the barber's like, I'm out of here, bro. Fuck, no. I can't blame him. Look at everyone's reaction. I pulled up the camera angle from the back room, and everything was thrown everywhere. Hell no. Like most viewers, Barber T doesn't know what to make of this. Now, it could be that a draft was responsible for the door's movement, but if that were the case, then the door would follow a somewhat consistent pattern of opening and closing. This isn't the case here, as it opens and closes hmm. as though someone or something is doing this. But, like always, it's up to you to decide as to what this might be. Ghost or not? Feel free to let me know what you think. In my head, I'm thinking, like, honestly, probably a ghost. I was going to say the wind, but hell no, that doesn't even make logical sense. So, yeah, probably like some poltergeist, a ghost, a witch, you know, maybe like Chucky. I don't know what you think. Put it down in comments. Man's just walking. Upon hearing an eerie sound coming from a tunnel, a young man decides to go inside and investigate. <laughs> I bet he wishes he never after what he sees. People check always this out. do that, bro. Come on, dude. I'm gonna go check it out. I'm gonna go check it out. You know, I think someone's like getting murdered. Let me just go look real quick. Dude, you good? What? What? What is he expecting right now? What the hell? Hello? He keeps going! <laughs> no. 
Nah, you deserve that one, bro. <laughs> you deserve that one. <laughs> yeah, nah, he deserve it. Bro, you hear something going like that? You gonna investigate? Why? Why? He deserved that one. He didn't get hurt, so I'm gonna say that jump scare was well deserved to you, sir. One of those pictures. One of the pictures where you don't see it at first, right? This photo comes out of Wisconsin State University. It's from 2012, and it was taken by Aaron Silva. What looks wow. like just an abandoned hallway, if you look very close to the back left, you'll see it. The outline of a person who had been watching him from around the corner. For context, this was a very common tradition at this school. A lot of people would dare each other to go inside the abandoned infirmary that was just off campus. You go inside using just a flashlight, and whoever stays in the longest eventually wins. But Aaron was never going to make it out. After more than an hour had passed, his friends eventually became concerned, and they go in looking for him, where they found him and described him as cut from the mouth down to the center of his chest. This was a hugely disturbing case for police, but they eventually do retrieve his phone, and they zero in on this picture, a picture which they believe shows who might have done this to Aaron. And if you increase the brightness, you can see the outline even better. Yeah, now that's terrifying. RIP him, though. Gotta be careful, man. These are some extremely unsettling, unsettling facts. facts. And I found all these on, on Reddit. Reddit. Number one is the tragic story of Joyce Vincent. Joyce Vincent was a normal person like anybody else who lived in an apartment by herself until she tragically passed away in 2003. Joyce's Damn, body Joyce. would remain in her apartment for three years. And the only reason the police found her was because a cop was in the building and noticed a foul stench coming out of her room. Number two tumors it's the last thing you want to hear in a doctor's office and in general it's just bad but this is gonna make it worse it's been documented for a lot of people that have had tumors removed that they have had teeth hair and even eyes and finally body balloons. What? if your body is left uncured or untouched for a long enough period of time after you have passed away the gases within your stomach will begin to swell and one day eventually they will pop kind of makes you wonder what happened to joyce in her apartment okay i'm done because these ones were grossing me out but i guess that's why rp joyce but what do you mean by them tumors be having teeth eyes like what that makes me like question everything <laughs> can you do the crying clown Disclaimer, Yo, her eyes. clowns, this story might not be for you. This story is an old Japanese urban legend, and it goes like this. There was a child walking to school one day down a lone country road. No wind was blowing, and there was no sound, not even birds chirping. It was dead silent. As the child got further down the road, they felt somebody watching them, so they turned around, and they saw a clown along the horizon running towards them at full speed. They continued walking, yet every time they turned around, the clown was closer. When they stopped walking, the clown stopped walking, but when they started walking, the clown started running. Eventually, the child got closer and closer to school and decided to run the rest of the way to the schoolhouse. Once they reached the gates to school, something grabbed their shoulder. It was the clown, and he said in a playful voice, I got you. Yet the clown had tears streaming down his face. He then pulled out a knife and said, Next time I catch you, I'll have to kill you. See you again. And what? Away. The threat right there is crazy. He said, the next time I see you, I'm going to have to kill you. See you again. Yo, that's crazy. I look at him like... This family's two dogs killed their two kids. Damn. A couple days ago, two pet pipples killed two very young girls. Their mom, whose name is Christy Bernard, was also injured while trying to save her daughter and son. Nobody knows what triggered the attack and why their pet dogs killed them. What makes this story extremely sad is that these kids' mother tried to save them, but it was too late. And she had to watch as her two pet dogs killed her kids. Further details of this extremely disturbing event have yet to come out. The two pet pit bulls have been taken away to local animal control department but it's unclear if they have been put down yet. Damn, RIP those kids, bro. You know how crazy that should be as a mom? She was probably just like, RIP them kids, bro. I really want to talk about this photo. The security guard at the Bryson Avenue Mall located in Virginia took this photo in 2011. It would later be turned into police, but the woman seen here was never found. For context, the security guard's name was Sean Mercado, and he worked the night shift at this mall. But the mall had been having strange things happening for like, like on after hours there are store alarms going off but nobody's ever found there 
hearing people run through the mall, but again, they never see anybody. Until one night when Sean Mercado goes out to have a cigarette, he's just kind of patrolling the parking lot, and he goes back to enter through the employee entrance, when he saw this woman staring back at him from inside <laughs> the mall. He takes a photo for proof, and then he radios for backup, and he goes in after her. He claimed to chase her as fast as he could, but he eventually lost her inside that mall. And despite a police investigation, she would never be found. Yeah, that picture of her was kind of scary. Well, I mean, he's a security guard, so he probably was like, Hey, what the- Legend or lie, the Petrified Forest. Escalante Petrified Forest State Park in Utah is beautiful. Some of the trails you can embark on will lead you to fascinating and beautiful pieces of wood. You may be tempted to take one or a piece of one home with you. Don't. This petrified wood comes with a curse. Burnt down houses, financial ruin, severe illness, cancer, even death Damn. have all been attributed to the curse of the petrified wood. Hundreds of pieces are sent back a year after a string of rotten luck suffered by the people who stole them. Allegedly, once the wood was returned, their lives went back to normal. In this circumstance, it doesn't really matter if you think this is a legend or a lie. It is illegal to steal this wood from the state park regardless. Just leave the wood alone. I wouldn't want you to get cursed. Yeah, I definitely would not trouble that wood like whatsoever. I would be like, you know what? The wood could stay there. I can buy some wood at Home Depot. I think I'm good. But what I'm trying to think about is like, if they sell that wood, would that mean the people they sell it to have bad luck also detectives said that this twisted case was unlike anything they had ever seen this is the bizarre case of the tangled web in the fall of 2012 in omaha nebraska dave krupa met a beautiful woman named carrie farver she brought her car into his auto repair shop and the mechanic was immediately attracted to her Damn. the two headed off and began seeing each other one night after a date they drove back to dave's place where they ran into dave's ex Liz Golier. Mm. Liz had shown up to pick up some of her things as the two had recently broken up. They said hello and Liz left. And Carrie and Dave were a really great fit. Neither were looking for anything too serious and just wanted to have fun. Carrie herself had a son and was trying to get her life back on track after struggling with some mental health issues in years past. Things were going really well and Dave said he was beginning to fall for Carrie. Then one day in early November, Dave left for work as Carrie stayed at his apartment and worked. A few hours later, Dave got a text from Carrie asking if the two should move in together, which was mm. out of the blue. Dave said no, and then got a text back saying, fine, I don't want to see you again. Go away. I'm what? dating someone else. I hate you. Dave was really confused. This seemed very out of character for Carrie. But he thought the two were over. Shortly after, Dave started receiving strange and threatening messages from Carrie's phone and emails. The messages stated that she was watching him from outside his window and knew things going on inside Dave's apartment. The messages wouldn't stop. It appeared Carrie was stalking Dave. She said that she had his spare key and was letting herself into his apartment when he was gone. Really weird stuff. The messages were uh -uh. constant and relentless. Liz, Dave's ex, showed him messages and appeared that Carrie was stalking her as well. On the other side of town, things were getting very concerning for Carrie's family and her son when they too started receiving strange messages from Carrie's phone. Messages saying that she was quitting her job and that she had moved to Kansas. Even stranger, they could never get Carrie on the phone. Just these weird, cryptic messages. Time passed, and when Carrie didn't even show up for her own father's funeral, the family knew something was very wrong. And you will not believe what happened next. Go to part two. Insane. This is the Tangled Web Case, part two. Carrie Farver hadn't been seen in person in months, and family and police were alarmed when her car was later found abandoned in a parking lot. The car was clean, no sign of Carrie, except there was one unidentified fingerprint. And on Dave's end, things were getting worse and worse. He'd even gotten a new phone, and somehow the stalking text from Carrie kept coming. Things took a strange turn when one day, Liz's house was set on fire. Her many pets lost in the blaze. Liz said it had to have been Carrie who did this. And the stalking and harassing continued for years. Until April years. 2015, a detective named Ryan Avis began looking into the case. Carrie's family had contacted investigators beforehand, but they really didn't take it seriously. Because they had Dave and Liz reporting that she was stalking them. But Detective Avis had a hunch and was suspicious that no one had seen Carrie in such a long time. Something wasn't right. One day, Detective Avis came into work to find Liz at the police station. Instead of filing a complaint against Carrie, as she had done so many times before, she was there to tell police that another one of Dave's ex-girlfriends was now stalking her too. Finally, police began to question everything. What if it was actually Liz behind all this and not Carrie? And if that's the case, then what happened to Carrie? Police began investigating, and what they found is nauseating. They eventually found out that Liz was the one who had been sending all those messages to Dave and Carrie's family the entire time. 
She had been posing as Carrie for years and did it all in a ruse to That's get back with Dave. The shocking revelation led to one question. No what did Liz way. do to Carrie? Police linked that fingerprint found in Carrie's car to Liz and uncovered a memory card of Liz's that contained a disturbing photo. The photo appeared to show Carrie passed with the same distinctive tattoo Farver had on her foot to identify her. It's believed that Liz attacked Carrie that morning that Dave started receiving those strange text messages from Carrie's phone, and then Liz went on to impersonate her for years. That's Police so believe weird, it took Liz bro. at least 40 to 50 hours a week to keep up with the stalking and harassing text messages. And she burned her own house down. <laughs> <laughs> With the photo evidence, the print found in Carrie's car, and a mound of other evidence from Liz's computers, she was charged and convicted. And sentenced to life behind bars. And Carrie has never been found. Dave was shocked and disgusted by the whole thing <sighs> and claimed he had no idea. Goodbye, Liz. I pray for Carrie's family. What Same. are your thoughts on this case? Nah, that case was crazy. It's like, bro, is it really that serious for you to do that, bro? She said she was putting in mad hours a week just to impersonate her you know all those hours she took impersonating this other female she could have used it to move on better her life get more money open new opportunities but instead she used it to stalk her ex come on bro just move on bro that's a sad case that's a sad case i don't recommend stalking or none of that and to me that's just weird but anyways just remember that these chains are free for limited only also the sunglasses are booming too i know you guys have been loving the sunglasses so make sure you cop up like look at that Make sure you get one. Like, look, sunglasses are blue. But if you like the video, just remember to like the video. Let's try to hit a thousand this video. Peace out.